paid for the smile we wear. We caught a witch and cut off her hair. We got the gloves that choke the neck. We got them six to choke his jack. We got them drums, demonic guitar. We got your lads, breath in the jar. We got the killers who stalk you down. Tape off the scene and chalk go down. We got that terror you've been looking for in the dark carnival creep show. Scary, demented, and crazy, so check out our creep.
like graphic to push what have it in your face. Ned, if you ain't down with that, fuck off. I like getting my dick sucked, jacked off, and salad toss. Ugly hoes, fine hoes, none go to waste. But for you, herpy meth head anus Ooh. in your face. Mikey, cocky, make the street pound. Legs down and all around, it's a brown sound. One folk up and the other one down. Fucker throwing up the wicked clown in your face. jury reached the verdict? Yes, Your Honor. We find the defendant guilty on all counts. The bailiff came at me with a pair of cuffs in his hand. He was taking me to jail, but that wasn't my plan. I broke the arm off my chair, stabbed him hard as I can. He got the ball. He got the ball! I jumped over the others and kicked the door down with my feet. Ran down the steps and headed right into the street. Waved down a car, the driver stopped and looked at me. He got the ball. Get the fuck up the 
celebrate All love, escape the hell of hate First thing I'ma do is start rocking In the casket, pop rocking Dirt dust, chipping away the rust With these freaky moves that I bust I'ma pop out, rock out with my cock out Monster mash all across the grass Fandango on the top of tombstones Wake up, then pile of bones Foot float right up out the graveyard In the street, crab walking way hard Car stop, what the fuck is going on? Dead bodies dancing on the lawn Do the sprinkler, do the Superman Get stupid, that's the plan Get up, jump with the moon Zombie slide up on your two. Can you fuck it up like us? Can you break the moves that we must? Get up, jump with the bang Zombie slide in New York bang Can you fuck it up like us? Can you break the moves that we must? When I die, what? please don't cry any Why? Cause I'm popping up and doing this shit The snake, my left eyeball hangs out of my face. Ooh. When I'm coping at a murderous pace, police shooting at me. I bust the hitchhike. I break it down any way you like. You don't even know what the fuck is going on. What they call that? I'm mowing the lawn. They wanna pop me, try to drop me. Back spin into a kickstand. They can't stop me. Look at me fucking up bad guitar. That day shit, so there you are. We live forever, so there you go. J U double G A L O. That's good, because this is Madman Pondo's Horror Movie Massacre. I'm Madman Pondo. And I am Crazy Mary Dobson. <laughs> New horror movies. Oh, classic horror Horror conventions coming in the area. <laughs> Madman Pondo's Horror Movie Massacre. Enjoy the show. And here we are, What's episode up? number three of Madman Pondo's Horror Movie Massacre. Of course, I am Madman Pondo with my co-host... Crazy Mary Dobson. And we're also joined by... DJ filling in the house, you know, you know. That's right. Uh, first of all, me and Mary, we want to uh, tell all the people who's wrote my hot mail that we appreciate... That you guys appreciate us. We read them all. We we have gotten so many. E- I mean, we, it's been crazy how many emails we've gotten off this show. We there's no way that we expected that kind of response, but uh, we do appreciate it. And because we know that you guys are appreciating us, the whole last hour of this from uh, midnight to one is going to be dedicated to taking all the callers. <laughs> Uh, I see we already have some callers on there. They're going to be waiting three hours. Yeah, for real. <laughs> like sweet. There's a number if you want to mention it to them. It's, is that, is that it? What's is that the number? 248 <laughs> That's it right there. 5616. Hell yeah. That's it. All That's in a row. It. That's the number. So uh, from 12 to 1, we're going to take those calls. But I see some of you is already waiting and probably got nothing better to do than to hang out with us anyway. So... But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the good news about tonight. (laughs) Later, about 11 o'clock, if you got something to do, if you got to go make a sandwich, if you got to take a dump, I don't care what it is, be back here at 11 o'clock and why. We have John Dugan, which is Grandpa from the original Text Chainsaw Massacre. He's going to be on our show and talk to us. We have a shitload of questions to ask him. Uh, questions that you, the Juggalos, yes. wrote Madman Pondo at Hotmail.com and wants to know what Grandpa thinks. Uh, we appreciate him being on. I mean, think about that. That's a pretty big accomplishment, saying yeah. that you was on the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Sucking on fingers. Hell Trying yeah. Trying to bash some heads in. That's, that's one of my uh, favorites. I uh, got a 
wrestling booking in Texas one time, and one of my conditions was that they take me to go eat at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. Then they took me to the graveyard, you know, and we couldn't find a gas station, so that sucked. Mm. But anyway, uh, moving on. Well, don't forget... uh, about 11 o'clock, we're going to call Grandpa from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, John Dugan. But April 24th, if you guys can focus back in on Crazy Mary we- and look at that T-shirt that she has on, April the 24th, we will have... Reggie Bannister from Phantasm 1 through 4 is going to be on the show talking to us. Oh, uh, I need to back up a second. I'm sorry. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Okay. I didn't show the clip. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, fuck Fuck it. it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. That's right. We'll do it live. So anyway, uh, I do believe it's probably uh, brought up. I'm not sure. But uh, we got a clip of Grandpa. From the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and we are ready to show that. Straight from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, John Dugan. Grandpa. Grandpa. Don't forget, he's going to be on the show. Call in. uh, Calling. Well, actually, we're calling him. Excuse me. At about 11 o'clock. It's a little less than two hours away. Uh, Now, let's go back. Please show. uh, Rewind. Now, show Crazy Mary's T-shirt. And the reason she has that T-shirt on. April the 24th. Reggie Bannister from Phantasm 1 through 4 now, is going to be on our show. In case you don't remember Reggie, I don't see how if you were a Phantasm yeah. fan or even if you've watched 1, 2, 3, or 4, uh, he is the ice cream vendor who has the four-barrel shotgun, which I think if he shot that would blow him into For the real. fucking ground. But, hey, hey it's a Reggie. horror movie. He's Reggie. It's a horror movie. But, uh... Reggie Bannister, uh, in case you do not remember or recognize who we're talking about, I think we also have a clip of Reggie. Lots of clips. It's actually one of my favorite scenes that Reggie did in the Phantasm movies. It's hot as love. (laughs) He is hot as love. That's right. Maybe we can even get him to play the guitar and sing that little song. That'd be fantastic. Nah, the Juggalos would shit all over that. (laughs) Shit all over that. Tell us if you guys want to hear the song. Yeah. I'm Madman Pondo at Hotmail.com. I'm Madman know. Pondo at Hotmail.com, or will we will be taking callers at midnight. You can tell us then. Uh, I think we've got that clip ready of Reg- Reggie from, uh, from Phantasm.
here he is. Hell the man, yeah. the myth, the legend from Phantasm, Reggie Bannister. Again, he will be a call-in guest here on Madman Pondo's Horror Movie Massacre on April the 24th. That's a Tuesday this time. Uh, Phantasm, whether you know me, whether you don't, uh, I have the tall man tattooed on the back of my leg so it's a pretty big honor to me that that reggie will be on this radio uh internet radio show uh also on april the 24th uh bay ling i know what you're saying who is bay ling <laughs> they uh, know if they saw her yeah well that's what we're getting ready to do uh, i won't even tell you who bay ling is i'll go ahead and uh We'll play this clip, but just so you know, Bay Ling is in one of the uh, classic. It's not so much a horror movie, but it does have a dead guy that runs around beating people's ass. So that's that's kind of horrifying. Good yeah. That's good enough for me. Uh, but Bay Ling is in The Crow, and I do believe we have that clip of who's also going to be on the second our uh, second part of the show of the horror movie massacre like Reggie will be from uh, 9 to 11 11 to 1 we will have Bay Ling so let's go ahead and show them who Bay Ling is Meet me at the waterfront after nope, the social. Nope, nope, that's Hello. not Bay Ling. That is not Bay Ling. The Crow, the Crow. She's in the Crow. Asian chick. <laughs> Weird haircut. Mm. Okay. Here we go. Well, thanks for checking out another clip on the web show and awesome fun catching up with actress Bai Ling. If you check her out on uh, YouTube and Google her name, it's pretty amazing what you find. She is a very unique character, super talented in Crank 2 there with Jason Statham. She's been in some amazing films on TV series around the world like Lost, playing the uh, love interest of Matthew Fox there, and just so many unique roles. She's very, very talented and great to catch up with her. Um, I first sort of got to know her in the film The Crow, uh, the last film from Brandon Lee, an absolute cult classic film, and here she is in a cool scene from that. You are very restless. I just wish I was a little hungry again, that's all. Be careful with what you ask for. Yeah, you may get it. There are energies colliding. Yeah, so there she is. After watching that film, I remember wishing that she was my half sister. It was crazy and very sexy, but. friend T-Bird won't be joining us this evening. I'm kind of a slight case of death. <laughs> Wanna sit down? Uh, uh, uh. Well, well, well. Devil's Night is upon us again. So we throw a little party, start a bunch of fires, make a little profit. I like the pretty lies. <laughs> Problem is... And there she is. Uh, that English dude, English dude called her Boy Ling, but that's because he's English. Her name is Bay Ling. But, uh, you know, at the gathering, I see a whole lot of the Crow t-shirts and the Crow uh, tattoo. So I'm pretty sure uh, the Juggalos would like to ask some questions of Bay Ling and Reggie Bannister. So don't forget, they both will be here April the 24th. And to leave questions for them, please write me and Mary, because we check it frequently, at madmanpondo at hotmail.com. But uh, that's not all. We also, uh, we, have our May, we don't have our May date yet for the show, but we do have our May guest. You might know her as Angela from uh, Sleepaway Camp, but Felicia Rose 
He's going to be on our show. Yeah, Felicia Rose probably gets more penis jokes than any guy <laughs> that I've ever heard. Yeah. It's... But uh, for for those of you who haven't seen Sleepaway Camp, please go out and watch this classic of a movie before May and give us some questions. But uh, Sleepaway Camp was one of those when I was working at the video stores when I was a kid that uh, you know was pretty popular, and I loved it. Uh, we have a scene of who... Her- I'm sorry? I think her face was just as creepy as her penis, like, at the end of the movie. I don't know. That penis was pretty creepy. Her face is pretty creepy, too. Any penis is creepy to me. Anyway, <laughs> um, we have a clip of Angela from Sleepaway Camp. And uh, this will refresh your memory in case you don't remember what she looks like. Meet me at the waterfront after the social. visual of Angela from Sleepaway Camp and I'll tell you why me and Mary searched her out because you the Juggalos requested that we get Angela from Sleepaway Camp so there's a few of you out there that has seen it uh, not just one I bet what 10 15 people asked for Felicia yeah. Rose and well not not a lot of you asked for Felicia Rose but you did ask from for Angela from Sleepaway Camp yeah not a lot of people know Real names these days. But there she is, Felicia Rose, and uh, she has agreed to be here in May, which we don't have the May date for the show. But uh, let me go ahead and go over this one more time. Uh, Tonight, uh, about 11 o'clock, we will have John Dugan from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and he is Grandpa. He will be calling into the show about 11 o'clock. For uh, questions that you've already wrote, madmanpondoshotmail.com. Uh, I'm not sure if this is cool or not, but if you have any other questions that you want to ask Grandpa from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, there he is on the screen for you. Maybe Sexy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> maybe call into the show and, and uh, maybe the booth guys can write down your question or... You know, because we have like, what? How many questions do you have? Uh, ten. 12. We have ten questions that you, the Juggalos, have asked. And to recap, April the twenty fourth, we will have Reggie Bannister from Phantasm One and Four. We will have Bay Ling from The Crow. The second half of the show, uh, April twenty fourth, and in May, we will have Felicia Rose from your request from Sleepaway Camp, who is Angela and. Can't wait to get her on the show and talk about her final scene. <laughs> I, bet, I bet she has a well-prepared speech for that. I bet I, she's been asked so much. That... I am actually uh, waiting on that well-prepared speech. <laughs> talk to her boyfriend about it. I did. Her, her husband. Her, uh, her husband is the lead singer of CKY. I went to a horror convention and I noticed him. And uh, Who would think that the lead singer of CKY would marry a woman with a penis? <laughs> but... Hey, to each his own. To each his own. Okay, well, uh, we, sitting at home, thought to ourselves, we keep showing you guys all the slashers and, you know, all the horror movie greats and all that, but without classic horror movie characters, there would be no horror movies today. True that. So, we thought this would be our time right here on... Madman Pondo's Horror Movie Massacre to tribute 
some of the classic monsters from the day. Along the, you want me to name them? Well, I mean, we're, we got uh, clips of each, but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, what's what's the first one there? Wolfman. Wolfman. Girl. Uh, Lon Chaney and Lon Chaney Jr. both played a Wolfman character, but I think Lon Chaney Jr.'s Wolfman was much more popular than uh, the dad. But uh, we got kind of a cool little video to show of the Wolfman. So when that's ready, we'll be ready. Uh, of course, oh! it, there it is. Oh. Who said I see walking in these woods? Why, it's Little Red Riding Hood. Hey there, Little Red Riding Hood. You sure are looking good. You're everything a big bad wolf could want. Listen to me, Little Red Riding Hood. I don't think little big girls should go walking in these woods. something here um you saw the makeup and the special effects and him changing from uh wolf to human there when when he got killed at the end back in them days that was some special effect geniuses right mind boggling so scared people shows you how much uh well you know and to tell you the truth I don't hate on them, and I'll go watch them, but I would prefer that over CGI any day. But Yeah, I like the things. Well, I the, like the, the, the original I, thing was that the CGI was a lot more, a lot better than the... The remake was awesome, don't get me Well, the prequel was awesome, don't get me wrong, but the original thing without CGI was pretty, pretty awesome. I'm, I'm glad they made the prequel to the thing, because I always wondered why those uh, Norwegians are, was chasing the wolf on the... On the uh, helicopter and stuff like that. So I'm not hating on CGI, but I would so much rather have, you know, original makeup and stuff like that. Which brings us to our next classic horror guy. Want to suck your blood. Want to suck your blood. What's his name? Dracula. Dracula. Bela Lugosi is Dracula. And uh, I hope you guys don't mind this song, but we have a, another clip of Dracula because of the... Uh, classic horror movie section so if we have that clip ready here is Bell Lugosi as Dracula
in my estimation, they couldn't have found anybody more perfect to play Dracula back in the day than Bella Lugosi. His eyes, like, his crazy eyes when you'd see blood or... I mean, even, even other movies Bella Lugosi did, nothing hit it like he did as uh, Dracula. Yeah, oh yeah. So, uh, moves us on to the next classic horror movie guy. The Mummy. The Mummy was played by Boris Karloff, not his most popular uh, mm. character that he ever played. We'll get to that here in a minute. But uh, The Mummy, on on some of them Saturday, uh, you know, Saturday Night Shockers that would play at midnight and stuff like that, I was always excited when it was going to be a Frankenstein, a Wolfman, or a Dracula. Mummy was probably my least favorite out yeah. of uh, the the you know classic horror movie guys but there are people out there who did like the mummy so i went ahead and got a clip together here is the trailer for the mummy Eternal punishment for anyone who opens this casket. The mummy. Is it dead or alive? Human or inhuman? You'll know. You'll see. You'll feel the awful, creeping, crawling terror that stands your hair on end and brings a scream to your lips. Ah! There's nothing on earth like the mummy. You will not remember what I show you now, and yet I shall awaken memories of love and crime and death. Now I know his horrible plan. He is going to kill her and make her a living mummy like himself. Boris Karloff as the mummy. Like I said, not his most famous character. Actually, his most famous character, I would say, is probably the most famous of the classic horror movie characters. Directed by James Wells, Boris Karloff, and Frankenstein. And not only is Frankenstein going to be in this clip, we also have uh, the bride of Frankenstein is also going to be in this clip, which which to me, if you, if you go back to, uh, you know, when they talk about Halloween and stuff like that. There's always a reference to Frankenstein. There's always a reference to the Bride of Frankenstein because I couldn't leave the chicks out of it. They got to put the chicks in there too. So there was yeah. Bride of Frankenstein and Wolfman and Dracula. But uh, here is a clip of Frankenstein and his bride. <laughs> Dress 
just misunderstood. Just wants to get a nut like everybody. And I feel so sorry, Frankenstein. I just want a friend. Well, I mean, no he was one of those uh, that horrified them back in the day until they watched it, and then they realized that he had no control. You know, he had to have normal brain. Yeah, he had a criminal brain. Yeah, and people started getting sad about Frankenstein. So by the son of Frankenstein, that's when they made him a little more vicious and stuff like that. Uh, Frankenstein also... <laughs> Got misunderstood, throwing in the flowers and wanted to throw in something else beautiful. So he picked up the little girl, and then yeah. people hated him for that. You know. Yeah, it was so traumatic. In the first movie they released in 1931, they didn't show him actually throwing the little girl in there. I will throw this out there. A lot of people say that I look like Frankenstein. Do I look like Frankenstein at all, you think? Cute Frankenstein. A cute Frankenstein. I'll take that. <laughs> if there is such a thing as a cute Frankenstein. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and uh, recap at 11 o'clock tonight. We are going to have a call-in guest of John Dugan. Grandpa. And John Dugan is uh, Grandpa from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And if you think about it, that's a pretty big accomplishment of... Uh, you know, I keep thinking about that, that, you know, you could say you've been in a movie, but how many people can say I was in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre? It's always awesome to be in the original, you know, especially if it did so good like Texas Chainsaw Massacre did. There's no way that they could have known it was going to be the uh, hit that it was, you know. I'm, and uh, I'm sure that it probably wasn't the hit that it was then like it is now. I think people, you people know. People a little more open to appreciate being. Appreciate it more nowadays. Yeah. So, uh, sitting around the house, and we always do this. Once we get to the house, me and Mary always say, why don't we talk about this guy? Why don't we talk about this guy? Well, guess what? We're talking about those guys today. <laughs> this is the day that we're going to talk about some of those guys. Uh, and what this is, this is a slashers that a lot of people forget to talk about. Or haven't even heard of. Well, I hope you've heard of them. I mean, to watch this show, you have to be a horror movie fan. So I would think a lot of you have heard of these people. Let's hope you have. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you talk about the first one. It's Uncle Vincent. And this is called Motel Hell. It's about, well, you just want me to, like, the whole movie? You okay. tell him. Motel Hell, it's about this man. He uh, ferments humans. And then he takes the meat from them and makes fritters. Cause now, it, how does he ferment them? He sticks them in the ground. He cuts the vocal cords off so they can't talk. And their heads stick out. We didn't get a clip of that, but if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It's real funny seeing them bobble around everywhere. It takes lots of critters to make Uncle Vincent's fritters. And he gets, serves his meat to the whole town. Everybody loves it, not knowing they're eating humans. And here is a clip of Uncle Vincent from Motel Hell.
it. Vincent, I do apologize. That scene was not filmed in HD. <laughs> what does he say, like, right before he dies? Like he's, and I remember he says something that was really funny. Like his remember. last little zinger before he dies. I don't remember. Dies. But, but if they uh, get the DVD or check it out on Netflix, you will see that in such be much better picture. And you will see what Mary's talking about, what sentence he says. I cannot remember. but It's going to bother me. But uh, that that is a classic movie. Please give that one a try if you have not. If you have, please talk about uh, poor old Uncle Vincent a little more. Yeah. Show some respect. So then, uh, now we're going to mine and Mary's horror, uh, favorite horror movie. So I'll go ahead and I'll let her take over on this one as well. We mentioned this before on the show, but Mother's Day trauma film. We uh, we've been trying to talk to Adelie, shared a couple Facebook messages, but uh, that's me and Pondo's favorite horror movie. And what it's is it about? It's about uh, these three girls, they go camping, and there's a mom and her two sons, and the mom trains her sons to be the best killers, rapists they can be. They, uh, I think we have a clip of them working you, out and trying to... You know, to just, just like Detroit mothers. Yeah. Just like Detroit mothers, they teach that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that and how to use guns. <laughs> and uh, I do believe we have a clip, and uh, go ahead and tell them what they're getting ready to see. You're going to see how serial killers and rapists train, how their moms train them. So here's the clip of Ike and Adley from Mother's Day. If you want to learn how to be a good serial killer, rapist, killer, murderer, uh, there's your training right there. I hate to say this, but there was an awesome rape scene in that uh, in that movie. It involves a Kodak, a Shirley Temple, and a park bench. So, <laughs> If there is such a thing as an awesome rape scene. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's weird saying it. But, this uh, movie would have it. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. And like we said, that's one of our... Uh, it's one of our favorite horror movies. We've watched it more than once at the house. Uh, if you haven't given it a shot, give it a shot. Lloyd Kaufman did not make this one. His brother, Charles Kaufman. But uh, Trauma, you know, put it out because it was that good a movie. Uh, a lot of you love trauma films. Well, if you love trauma films, you're going to love Mother's Day. Yes, definitely. Now, this next one... This was kind of my own personal uh, choice here. Uh, a lot of you probably seen American Werewolf in London, and it won a bunch of awards for uh, the makeup and all that. 
But the thing about the American Werewolf in London, there was a scene in there that had four guys that just looked pretty cool to me as a kid. And uh, they uh, take out a whole family and all that. I won't explain the whole scene. We're getting ready to see it. But uh, these, these guys have no name. But they they look really really cool and never went anywhere other than a dream sequence of American Werewolf in London, and I would love to say here is these killers, but I don't even know their names. So uh, we have a clip from the American Werewolf in London. Remember tonight, uh, puppetry is an art form. Oh, you know that violence art? Oh, well, that's, well, that's violence with puppets. That's Punch and Judy. They've always been violent. But Punch and Judy, that's it's good. It's good. It's a yeah. aggressive behavior. Better, better than my ass? I just oh. I'm watching. I'm watching. Oh. It's all right. Oh. I was going to bite you very badly. Get the door. I'll get it. All right, all right. Hold your horses. All right, already. Just had a nightmare. Not to worry, I've just the thing. I hope it's some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Holy there it shit. Is. And yes, yes, uh, there is some pussy in this in this film. He he yeah. uh, Actually, that guy was from the commercial, the Dr. Pepper commercial, and Dr. Pepper dropped him because he was running around naked in the American Werewolf in London. That's just a, a small fact that I know about. But I, I'm not even talking about the American Werewolf in London. I'm talking about those four characters. Just seeing that, didn't you think that those guys should have went somewhere else? Like, yeah, they, they should at least like put their names out a little bit. They should have had their own movie. Yeah. If you ask me. Yeah. They they look like uh, the Cenobites before Hellraiser, <laughs> if you ask me. So, that is uh, three movies, Motel Hell, Mother's Day, and American Werewolf in London. If you haven't checked out, we'd love for you to check out. But uh, if you if you, you know, don't have the time, then we understand that. But if you do have the time, we will be back April the 24th. And we want to hear what you people thought about the movies that we just requested to you. Again, that was uh, Motel Hell, Mother's Day, and American Werewolf in London. And we are always taking suggestions. If there's a slasher film or something that you really enjoyed and we haven't mentioned it on the show, let us know on Madman Pondo at Hotmail.com and watch it. And which brings up a, a, a good point. You, the Juggalos challenge us all the time you uh you write my hotmail saying have you seen this movie have you seen this movie and most, most, of, has. most of the movies <laughs> i have seen there's the the email address right there madman pondo at hotmail.com most of the movies i have seen but there has been some of you juggalos out there that has stumped me on some movies they were british movies though both yeah. of them and just to let you know that me and Mary care about what you think, we went out we and we watched the movies that you told us to. And uh, some of them were pretty shitty. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Some of them was a little hard to watch, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I was trying to, trying to focus on the TV. Yeah. It was a little bit hard. I'm not, I'm not even going to embarrass you and <laughs> tell you the ones that... Uh, we're pretty shitty. I, I will tell you, uh, Slaughter Vomit Doll should have never been made. Whoever made that, directed that, acted in that, needs their fucking asses kicked. That was the worst piece of shit ever. Uh, I don't care who who likes it, but uh, I hated that. I fucking hated that. Preach. Preach to him. I do. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, but 
there was some movies that we did enjoy. Yes. And uh, the first one being... Mum and Dad. Mum and Dad. M-U-M, not M-O-M. Yes. It's a British film, so it's not Mom and Dad. If you're going to go out looking for it, you got to look for Mum and Dad. M-U-M Mom. and Dad. Every one of the mums is packing heat. And we, we, really didn't, uh, we really didn't know what to expect. And even as we started to watch the movie, we still didn't know what to expect. Yeah. But there's a scene in there. There's a scene that... Walk in and you know what he's doing by what you can see, but what he's doing it with is free. I would say I thought it was awesome because just thinking of that, it's not. It's pretty disturbing. Not as disturbing a Serbian film. Nothing is as disturbing as no. suburban film. But uh, it was pretty. It was pretty gruesome, and the they were real detailed with it of the aftermath of what was happening. You just, you just need to watch it. You'll know what I'm talking about. It's and, when you first meet Dad. Yes. And uh, if you're interested, we do have the trailer from the movie Mom and Dad. This is Lena. She's new. You guys are brother and sister. Adopted, yeah. We only live over the way. Just past the perimeter. The practical at the end of the runway. No. I'm Mum. He's dead. I said to Dad only the other day I wanted another girl. I'm not. There you are. Well, you in my house. You'll abide by my rules. Do you understand? You do your chores. Keep your mouth shut. And your mother at me. Wake up, angel. Time to play. Who oh, you'll have me to answer to. That's smashing. Oh, yeah. You've got that. Do you want to stay part of this family? Fire inside! You think you're going to last long with her around? sinks you in and wants you to check out that movie and I can't even give dad justice like the the trailer shows you a little bit of dad but the shit that dad does in this movie is yeah they're Christmas <laughs> yeah. they didn't even show any of that their Christmas is really pretty fucked up their tree <laughs> is well, don't say nothing let them watch I'm it I'm not but, gonna uh... tell them the tree but, <laughs> but uh yeah it's it's something, and and we was I, I can't remember the dude's name. Please call in and tell us you was the one. But uh, mom and dad, that's the first one you guys had us watch. Uh, the second one that you another guys, British film. Yes, had us watch is uh well I don't I don't think it was as British as Australian. I think no. it was more Australian, but um, Primal was the name of the movie, and again. Starting out, it's like 
five, six people in a car going camping. and we Off thought, radar GPS. Yeah, off radar thing. GPS. We thought, okay, here we go again. But this movie takes a turn that we didn't even expect. And because uh, what we do is we don't watch trailers. We don't figure out, you know, try to figure out what they're about. We just watch the movies. So this one took a, a turn that we did not expect whatsoever. And it turned out we liked that. That was pretty fucking good. uh, Pretty bloody. Yeah. Uh, A lot of action in it. I guess that's what you'd say in a horror movie. And make you think twice about going into strange water. Exactly. So uh, here is the trailer for Primal. How specific do you want me to be? How specific can you be? Try Australia. <laughs> Where are you two going? Uh, just looking at the stars. <laughs> I'm going swimming. Bathers are in the tent. Chad, we're in the middle of nowhere. We don't need bathers. <laughs> You're burning up. I found a penny. What's wrong with her teeth? <laughs> We've got to get her to a doctor. Oh, settle down. Don't tell me to settle down. We're not leaving just because someone's got a fever. Mel? You shouldn't be out here, Smelly. Mel? Did you see her teeth? Well, the way I see it, we got two options. Oh, yeah. Either we trap her. Or kill her. <laughs> they got him, the leech just got him. What are we gonna do? We have to kill him. Grab a knife. <laughs> no! Don't do it! Just fucking stick it in! <laughs> Also, if you like tentacle porn, watch <laughs> well, that too. You know, you kind of give things away that you're not supposed to be by saying that. But I do know where you're going with that, and they will see it in the movie when, uh, when they. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a surprise what you just said. But anyway, Primal, there it is. And uh, again, that is uh, another movie that you Juggalos have suggested that me and Mary go home and check out, and we did. Now we have one more movie. One more movie that I had seen that you had not seen. Street Trash. Go ahead. Take it over. Street Trash is about these hobos. They've pretty much taken over the city. And uh, this liquor store gets... This liquor store owner finds booze that he's had in the back. And he brings them up. And it's called Viper. And they're real cheap. So one hobo gets it. And he goes out. Well, another hobo steals it for him. Goes to a toilet. And drinks it, and he melts to the toilet. Not just melts, but melts slowly. Yeah. <laughs> and in colors that normally wouldn't come out of a person. Now, I had seen this movie, but Mary hadn't, so was you disappointed in this movie? Not at all. Very, it was It was different, gory. I liked it a lot. And the Juggalos is the one that, that suggested it to us. So here is the trailer for Street Trash. I don't need this. Are you tired of the same old routine? My wife, my Busting your hump and getting nowhere? This just ain't my day. The boss, is he always on your back? Not the money act belongs in your chair, not in your lap, which is where you keep trying to put it. You got to... The wife. You know. And the kids. 
Is that right? They never listen. I hate to see him pissing his life away in that goddamn computer. Do you ever feel like forgetting the whole thing? I think I got it easy. Well, now you can. I'm talking about life! Drop out and join the ranks of the few. The filthy. The trash. <laughs> My own place, a condominium. Where else can you live for free and eat for even less? Well, be forewarned. Freedom has its price. Yes, there's always a snake in the Garden of Eden. What you got for me today? Today? Ten or five Viper. One buck. Here's to you, pussy. <laughs> Don't drink my flavor. What? You can't hold your liquor, huh? It's easy to find us. We're all over the place. Street trash. There it is. Street trash. And uh, you, you would be surprised at the special effects. And I think that movie was made in the 70s. And the special effects that uh, that they came up with for the movie was pretty amazing to me. Yeah, me too. Okay, so... Uh, I'm looking at these three callers who's been on the line since, you know, we have, you know, been here. So I think we're going to go ahead and take three calls. And uh, the first one, line one, is Hack. Hack, are you there? Yeah, what up? What's up, man? What's up? You have been on the phone <laughs> since this show started, so I <laughs> thought I would go ahead and uh, answer your call. What's up, man? Hello. Uh, uh, just chilling, relaxing, nice day out in Maine. What is uh, your fucking, favorite horror movie? My favorite? Um, well, one of them actually is um, Midnight Horror Movie. Midnight Horror Movie. Uh, there's a guy who takes over the movie theater and uh, kills yeah. everybody in the theater, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. That's one of your yeah, favorites? Yeah. yeah, one of my favorites. Okay. Besides all the um, besides all the old like old like um, Freddy and shit. Yeah. Uh, like, all the- what What was the name? Did they have a name for that slasher in that movie? I can't remember. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. At all. Yeah, I don't remember. No. But I do remember that that did have some pretty good kill scenes in it. Hell yeah, it did. <laughs> so, uh, was there a reason you called, or you just wanted to call and talk? Uh-uh. Actually, I called and um, fucking, I'm just chilling on the boondocks, this juggalo chat line I ran into. Oh, I hear you. I was wondering if I could, I was wondering if I could plug it real quick. Sure, go right ahead. ahead. Hell yeah, um, everybody can call 610-769-9195. When you call, press one, two, three, double pound, and you can come talk to the family anytime. One, two, three, double pound. And, and what is that? That's a boondocks hotline or something? Yep. It's the, it's the boondocks. It's for all juggalos and juggalettes to call anytime, 24-7. You can come in and chat. Okay. All right, man. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for giving us a call. You know, after uh, 11 o'clock, have you seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Yes. And um, yeah, like the original was like seventy nine. Yeah, so, nah, seventy six, yeah. I think. Uh, I don't know really, yeah. but uh, yeah, one of them seventies. Anyway, uh, yeah. t- keep tuning in because Grandpa's gonna be on the line pretty pretty soon. All right, cool. We got. I'm playing you guys in the room anyway on there, so everybody's hearing whatever going on. So what you got a what you got a party going on over there? Yeah, there's a few people chatting, and I just I'm um, playing the um, someone's online right now on you guys' radio because I don't have online yet, and they're just playing it through the through the room so people can hear it. All right, man. We'll uh, put on there two four eight 
306-5616. Tell them to call us with their favorite horror movie here after 12 o'clock. Oh, fuck yeah, it was very well. I'll uh, give everybody I can the number. All, All right, right, man. All right, cool. Thank Sounds you. good. Yeah, very much. Whoop, whoop. Peace All right, man. Cool. I think I'm saying this right. Kenshin? Are you there? Yeah. What's it, up? What, what, how do you say it? Kenshin? Yeah, Kenshin. What's up, man? What's you're, up? You're What's in up? New Jersey? Jersey. Unfortunately. New Jersey <laughs> is the home of the Toxic Avenger. Oh, yeah, man. Those Toxic! Are fucking... <laughs> Hell yeah. So what would you call to talk to us about today? Oh, man, I'm just excited to see your special guest. You know, fucking Texas, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? Cause, yeah. Uh, seriously, does that guy ever run out of gas? Does he have, like, a hidden supply somewhere? Nah, I don't know. He's not going to be here, though. He's just doing a call-in, but, you know. Oh, yeah, I know. Did yeah, you, that's still dope, you know? Did you have some kind of question that you wanted to ask him? Um, basically, uh, how much gas did he go through? <laughs> how much gas did he go through? I will remember Kenshin wants to know how much gas he went through. Kenshin, what? Yeah. Like and Kenshin. I, I, got a, I got a question for uh, Phelan. Go right ahead. Oh. What's up, man? What's up, man? Um, what's up, man? Uh, yeah, dude, this is Tension and um, owner of Tension in the JFL. You know me, right? Oh, so, shit. Uh, oh, shit. You guys don't even know about the JFL. Don't. I'll bring you up to date quickly. Oh, On yeah, Blaze's right. show, we do a, a, a football league. Oh, okay. But go ahead, quickly. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, yeah, I was just going to give a shout-out to the fill-in and Blaze did homie on that. And my favorite movie is probably going to be uh, Friday the 13th. And one more thing, I got uh, on Netflix, there's a movie called Cross Space. It's kind of creepy as fuck. I, I, I saw Crawl that. Space. It's got uh, oh, his last <laughs> his last name is him. his last name is Kinski. I can't remember his first name. Am I right? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm think I'm thinking back right now. Yeah, I, uh, I just watched that shit. The, the, the Crawl Space is like in in the roofs. Isn't that right? Like, uh, well, what are they called? You know, they're the yeah. Ducks. Yeah, the, the, the air ducts, is that the crawl spaces you're talking about? And he goes from room to room? Yeah, pretty pretty much. It's like that oval uh, prof like professor-looking dude. And yes. It, it's really creepy, you know. I don't want to give too much away. But, yeah, he definitely, uh, you know, it's one of those uh, old creepy movies. So you've probably seen that way back when, right? I sure did, way back when. <laughs> that guy actually has nothing to do with his daughter, Nastasia Kinski, because... Uh, she got way more popular than he did, and he couldn't take it, like the jealousy inside of him. Uh, you never saw a movie that they did together because he really resented his daughter for uh, being more popular than he was. She was in uh, Cat People. Do you remember Cat People, Nastasia Kinski? Uh, thank you. <laughs> Isn't that really old? Yeah, yeah it's really old. Yeah. I can't remember his first name, but his last name is Kinski, too. But that's one of your oh, wow. favorites, Crawl Space? Um, uh, it's just one of the recents that I get. You might not have seen. I, I trying to stump I you. To, you know. Oh, you was trying to yeah. stump me, wasn't you? Uh, yeah, you, you, I figure you guys got Netflix, really. You might want to check it out. But you guys, like you said, you've probably seen it, uh, you know. Yeah. Like you said, so. Yeah, that was, but, I was uh, a, that was an HBO favorite back when I was growing up. They used to play that all the damn time. Hell yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, back in the day, HBO, that's all you had, you know, no internet, really. So Back in the day, that. HBO stand for, hey, Beast Man's on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, hey. thanks for calling us, Jersey. So uh, I guess don't forget to uh, t stay tuned in. Whoa. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Stay no, tuned no. in. We'll After 11 o'clock, we will have John Dugan, Grandpa, from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Are you cool with that? Hell yeah, man. That's what, I, I can't wait to see what he thinks about the gasoline, but it, you know, anything at this point is uh, cool. I haven't seen anything on him for a while. So. Alright, man. I will. T you try to remember it, and I'll try to remember it. How hey, much Kenshin, right? <laughs> Kenshin? Kenshin wants to know how much gas did he use? Okay, I got it. And gas meaning how much energy he had? Is that what you're talking about? No, for the well, chainsaw. You know, oh, I, I, I guess he's he didn't I, use I, the I, chainsaw. I, but he was on set, I guess. Is what I he gotcha. means. 
All right, Kenshin. Well, thanks for calling in. All right, do woo. All right, man. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Bye. Line three, we have Lance. What's up, Lance? Yeah. What's, What's up, up, Lance? What'd you call us in for today? Kansas. Kansas. Okay. <laughs> There's the state. Now, yeah. why did you call us today? Oh, uh, call down to all who's playing, to all who's talking down here. Oh, so have you been paying attention to the show so far? Yeah, I was watching it a little earlier, and then I had to leave to go to work. So you went to work at 9 o'clock and got home at 10, 12? I want to work there. No, he was watching no. and he went to work. Oh, <laughs> you're at work I now. It, I watched it until about 9, and then I left my house. I hear you. you keep so, your phone on? Sorry, I work. So what's your uh, favorite horror movie? My favorite horror movie uh, has to be Chainsaw Massacre. The first one or the remake? The first one. Hell yeah. My favorite's the second. I don't know. Well, do, you do know who our guest is going to be after 11 o'clock tonight, right? Who's that? Uh, Grandpa from the original Texas, Texas Chainsaw Massacre will be calling in after 11 for questions. I wish I didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you didn't smoke drugs on the way. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so was there any other horror movie topics you wanted to talk about? No. So, I'll take that as a no. Really just wanted, <laughs> not really. Just wanted to call in and see how you all are doing. All right. Doing man. good. All right, man. Well, hey, if you think anything, after midnight tonight, we're going to have some more uh, caller time. Is that cool with you? Yeah. All right. A man of small spoken All right. words. I died of like. <laughs> All right. Thanks for calling in. See you, Lance. All right. We'll take this one more. We got uh, Tiffany from Arkansas, line four. You there, Tiffany? Hello. Whoa. What's up? <laughs> Same shit, different day. Happy to be home, man. Yeah? Where was you at before oh, yeah. you got home? Indiana. We're uh, from Indiana. Yeah, we're from Charlestown, Indiana. I was in Amo, Indiana, and then I was in Indianapolis, Indiana. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, we're, we're right by Kentucky, like 15, about half hour from Louisville. So, Tiffany, what is your favorite horror movie? That's a hard one, actually. Well, I mean, you got really, It's you not got, really a single movie. It's a set. Well, give me the set. What is your favorite set of horror movies? Nightmare on Elm Street. I, two years old, grew up, fucking grew up watching that shit, man. All the Nightmare on yeah. Elm Streets? Oh, fuck yeah. Even the new Nightmare? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm so no, glad you no, said no. that. I'll tell you, the new nightmare, uh, me and some friends took out of school and went to Evansville, Indiana, because it wasn't playing around us. We were so excited, and then on the way home, we were so disappointed. But all the, yeah, other, all the other nightmares we loved. No, yeah, pretty much. I can definitely understand that one. So was there... Was there any other horror topic you want to talk to us about today? Uh, actually, there is a guy that is runs his own horror company. He does mon movie monsters and everything. They've oh, got yeah? him on the Sci-Fi Channel. Motherfucker's a juggalo. Oh yeah, how uh, do you know that? M Monster Man. It comes on after Face Off or something, right? It, it was after Face Off. I actually record the shit. And I about shit my pants because right there, national fucking television, motherfuckers got a hatchet man hanging around his neck and fucking wearing ICP gear and fucking psychopathic gear. I'm like, fuck yes. Hell fuck yeah. yeah. Fuck. <laughs> that's, that's not just us that loves horror movies. That's world round. And uh, Juggalos world round love horror movies. So, you know, I could see that happening, that guy wearing that. Which reminds me, since I called forever ago and haven't been able to get through since, uh, did you ever check out that movie, uh, Cradle of Fear? Cradle of Fear, no. Did you call us before Stop and Honda. say that? Yep, I called you and I emailed it to you. 
Oh, okay. yeah, it was the Cradle, uh, was it from the band or something? Oh, yeah, from the band. Yeah, yeah it was from Cradle of Phil. Yeah. Yeah, no, I didn't check that out. I'm sorry, but uh, may- maybe Mary will remind me when I get to the house and I will check that out. How long does that last? Uh, probably about, it's probably about an hour, hour and a half movie. We'll pop some energy drinks when we get home. We'll watch it. Okay. All right. Well, Tiffany from... Yeah, I'm not talking Tiffany. Yeah, I do yeah. too. I do too now that the Cradle of Filth come out. All right. Well, uh, did you, did you know that we're going to have Grandpa from the original Texas Chainsaw calling in after 11 o'clock tonight? Son of a bitch, no? Yeah, so please yeah. keep tuned in. And, uh, you know, we got some questions for him. We're going to have a good time with him. He's a pretty uh, outgoing guy, actually. Yeah, talking about Pork and Paula Dean. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I still think you should get uh, fucking the original Freddy on there. That would be great. Yeah. Give, give us the number. <laughs> yeah. If you guys any, have any information on him, send it in. Definitely. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Tiff. Thanks, guys. Bye. All right, see ya. Bye. All right. Well, uh, that was just some callers who had been waiting since 9 o'clock. I just thought I would jump in there and take real quick. He's a nice guy. I try to be. Try to be. Don't tell everybody that. Yeah, not like a bunch of people watching this. Hopefully a bunch of people are watching this. So anyway, it's time to move on to our next subject, movies that me and Mary are waiting on that's not even out yet. This poster, the one the movie I talked to is hanging right by our bed. It's called um, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I will say that when Bubba Hotep came out and Bruce Campbell played Elvis, I was so impressed that I cannot wait for a, you know, like we all know Abraham Lincoln uh, didn't fight vampires. We know Elvis didn't fight we zombies. There. We weren't there. there. There's no such thing. We weren't there. So, anyway, I am really looking forward to this movie, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. I think it's going to be one of those movies that stands out over the all. Because uh, Bubba Hotep, you know, at the gathering, a lot of you people talk to me about Bubba Hotep. And I'm like, yeah, you know, of course I've seen it. So, here's the preview for Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. And you thought that man was just good at freeing slaves. <laughs> it surprises the shit out of me. Like, I could see that movie easily coming out as, like, a B-grade movie. But for someone to take that movie and it hit the, like, the big screen, you know, I, I think it's pretty impressive. I mean, that's kind of a far-out idea. Well, pretty much anything that Tim Burton gets his hands on gets a movie release, I figure. But, uh, you know, even even this one... It was a stretch. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited as hell to see it. Me too. Uh, June twenty second comes yeah. out in theaters. June twenty second is a, well, that's what it says on us post yeah. on our poster. June twenty second poster might lie. We do not know. Yeah, it's we, a Abraham Lincoln poster. It shouldn't lie. <laughs> hey, very good point. Very good point. <laughs> but you never know. All right. Well, the next movie that's coming out, uh, I don't think this is going to get a theater release. 
But uh, da, 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 da. yeah, when we saw the trailer, we was very impressed, and we cannot wait. Um, and we're sure if you see it, you won't be able to wait either if you haven't already. This is directed by Bobcat Goldthwait, and the name of the movie is God Bless America. And you know what? I'll go ahead and I'll let the uh, trailer speak for itself. Here is the trailer for God Bless America. The most hilarious ringtone ever. Just text P-I-G. God hates fans. God hates fans. We have a press that just gives them a free pass. The boys were caught after setting the homeless man on fire. Did you find the f***? A tumor this size is very dangerous. Do you have any family? Oh, gotta take this. My name is Chloe. I live in Virginia Beach, and everyone loves me because I'm so pretty. I wanted an Escalade! This is the biggest day of my life, and you're Creepy? Isn't the schoolgirl thing a little played out? Don't move and don't make a sound. If you want the car, just take it. My parents got me the wrong one anyways. Yeah, that's a fucking tragedy. Did you just kill Chloe? Awesome. And that was a fantastic start. But you know who else really rips my cock off? The Kardashians. People who use rock star as an adjective. Women who call their tits the girls. Anyone who wears crystals. You're aiming at the bear, right? This is the best day ever! <laughs> Frank, don't. Let me. I'm recording this. Thanks for turning off your cell phone. You're welcome. Why have a civilization if we're no longer interested in being civilized? Hey, buddy. What's wrong? A lot. A lot of crazy people out there. <laughs> I only want to kill people who deserve to die. We gonna do this or what? I know it's not normal to want to kill, but I am no longer normal. You really gotta take both those spots? Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you. Poop in my food. <laughs> now, not to that extreme, but how many times has people been talking in the theater or taking up two parking spots that you wish you didn't have a nine millimeter sitting right next to you? <laughs> now, of course, we can't do that, but this movie can damn sure show us what would happen if we did do that. Well, but, you'd probably get arrested if you did do that. Well, I do realize but... that. I do realize that. But sometimes things are worth it. <laughs> People talks during movies, that's worth it. To yeah, you get your, grind your gears, doesn't it? It does. I hate that. So, uh, moving on. This next movie, uh, one and two. Some people hate on two, but I really loved one and two both. And uh, always ask myself, what happened to the original girl in the first one? Jeepers Creepers 3. Jeepers Creepers 3. Uh, it says it comes out in 2013, which is pretty vague. That's like 365 days <laughs> that it could come out. But uh, either way, we are anticipating that this is going to be a good sequel to go with 1 and 2. And like I said, uh, did you see 1 and 2? Mm -hmm. A lot of people hate on 2. I do not hate on 2. I thought 2 was pretty good. And it, I had no complaints about yeah, 2. For some yeah. reason, it, it did have the brother... In it, which I didn't think he needed to be in into, but they put him in there, so there he is. But now, the original girl comes back for part three. So here is the trailer for Jeepers Creepers three. Grandparents look at. Not as long as I can remember. Gosh, it's crazy. It's just like I remember it.
by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Any, me, mine, mo. Creeper is back in Jeepers <laughs> Creepers 3. I cannot wait. Like, uh, I don't know if that's a DVD release, a movie release, but somebody told me about it, and I went straight to YouTube, searched it out, found that trailer, and now I'm very, uh, very much excited waiting on this movie to come Love out. Love to see it in theater. feel a lot better. Well, see usually... the first time? Usually when they bring the original people back then, then then yeah it usually gets a theater release but you know it's when they switch that main actor for another actor that just gets shit on and just puts <laughs> straight to dvd but uh there's it, a uh another movie coming out we don't have a clip for it and it's not necessarily a horror movie it does scare the people uh godzilla there's supposed to be a new one coming out this year and I think that'd be really fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big Godzilla fan. When uh, when I spent all that time in Japan, I bought a bunch of Godzilla toys. I uh, went to a Godzilla museum and pressed all the Japanese yeah, people in there. There was there was Japanese people who didn't know some of the characters of Godzilla, but this American kid knew each character, and they just kept getting louder and louder each one that I would say, and I felt like I was. Godzilla star right about there <laughs> knew everything but but uh Godzilla's coming out so let's recap we got Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter June 22nd we got God Bless America we don't know if it's theater or DVD and we have Jeepers Creepers 3 and we don't have a clip but we have Godzilla the new Godzilla coming out if I went I went to uh, Godzilla Final War while I was in Japan uh, I couldn't understand a word they were saying, but there was no way I wasn't going to go see this while I was in Japan. And while I was there, uh, they gave me these little toys. I will bring it next time and show you. It's Godzilla on a planet, and it, it has the year of the last movie that they made. And they wasn't going to make another movie for 10 years, but I guess the uh, high in demand uh, and the low, uh, you know, they need money. So they went ahead and made another one before the the cuz I think it was supposed to be another 2 years. But I'm glad that there's going to be a new Godzilla. If movie you go on out. Google and type in Godzilla, there's like this poster thing for it. He's standing on the big 2012. So hopefully that's true. I yeah, hope it's true. Okay, we got about 30 minutes until John Dugan just is enough on time the show. So, for these This is going to be the section where me and Mary, again, we pay attention to what the Juggalos have to say. And Always. you you Juggalos, uh, to begin with, we didn't, we didn't really understand why we was getting requested, hey, check this out, check this out, uh, because they're kind of weird, actually. But we have fallen in love with them. and Yes, especially the first one. You've shared them with us, so now we're going to share them with the rest of the people. So, uh, this first movie, <laughs> short film, uh, it's called Treevenge. Yes, it's very, it's sad, but at the same time, it's awesome. You, I, w I wouldn't say it's sad at I'll all. I'll never look at Christmas the same again. <laughs> but, uh, when, while we was watching, you know, to begin with, with Treevenge, uh, I mean, we, we want to hear what the Juggalos have to say. And when you guys say it, we try to pay attention. And to begin with, we kind of looked at each other, but by the end of this one, we thought, what the hell? I was like, hell yeah. What, what was the Juggalo's name? That um, um, 
Wicked razor balls. Wicked razor balls. That sounds painful. <laughs> anyway, Ricker, uh, excuse me, Wicked Razor Balls wants me, and now we want all of you to enjoy Treevenge. Here's Treevenge. Enjoy.
goddamn good piece of shit. Ah! You're no good to sell. You're all banged up. It's reef time for you. Take this piece of fuck out of here. What am I supposed to do with this fiddly little fucker? I take the garbage, make something pretty out of it. Put it up for decoration. I don't care. Top fucking chop.
Christmas morning, McMichaels. Santa Claus found you two little elves, huh? Open it up, Scout. Open it up. Just don't even worry about saving the paper. Just rip it open, Jason. Christmas morning at the McMichael house. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> I love Christmas. <laughs> Jason, your turn. Open another one, bud. Okay, open it up. Show Dad. What is it? Look, I got a chainsaw. No, no, no. as much as we did we we to begin with thought that wicked razor balls was a little <laughs> weird but then as it went on and all that violence was going on we kind of loved it we thought it was pretty good so as soon as they snatched up that that little girl i was sold that's right uh we have about 10 minutes before we call John Dugan, so we have two more short films that you Juggalos have sent in to us, so we have time for one more. And this one, I ain't gonna lie, I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, me too. It's kind of Tim Burton slash Dr. Seuss. Uh, what, what's the girl's name that sent this? Chrissa. That's not, all. Not Carissa, Chrissa. That's all she put was Chrissa. 
So, uh, it's, it, this is kind of a, a girl short film. I That's mean, safe to say, right? Yeah. So, you juggalettes out there will probably enjoy this more than the juggalos. But I kind of enjoyed it, so I guess, you know, maybe I'm gay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, here we go. Here is Evelyn, the cutest dead girl. Let's venture right now to a world very near. It's a place we'll all visit, because death lingers here. We're all quite well, and nothing seems scary. If you look close enough, you'll find where Evelyn's been buried. Paranoid and uncertain, yet inquisitively prone, she hardly remembered what had been carved out in stone. Evelyn's an energetic and curious dead child. Not one to mingle in the dull or the mild. Cheerfully eager to come out and play. She felt oddly glum when she rose up that day. But then she heard some sounds she'd never heard before. And in an unexplored room, she found a large door. Crossing the threshold, wonder her guide. She wasn't prepared for what waited outside. She carved out a plan. She had to make friends in that weird outer land. And preparing herself in fashion the cuts, she picked out the right shade of slimy crow guts. seemed forthcoming till she fainted and failed. She even tried sleeping in her shallowest grave, but just learned about how a fish might behave. She searched for the means to seal her own doom, but just ended up as 
having fun in her room. It was back to her faithful 45 automatic. But playing with crows wasn't exactly pragmatic. So off to the dump to get mauled by bears. Evelyn passed young Devon in the road standing there. Those little rich girls made Evelyn's heart hurt. She wanted to kill them and burn off her skirts. She thought she had learned how joy could elude. Then she saw a young Devon and her heartstrings unglued. She forgot those cruel girls when she felt something more. The bus had pulled up and delivered the gore. Now, Devon, well, he's the cutest evil dead boy that you'll ever find. Which has made Evelyn decide to leave life behind. they're going off together to play in a very special kind of dead person way. Perhaps now you've seen, there's nothing to fear. Trust me, trust yourself. There's nothing wrong with the weird. You know, when when uh, when Mary asked me to sit down, because Mary actually saw it before I did, uh, that came to the hot milk thing, and she said, sit down here and watch this with me. And to begin with, I was a little like, I don't know about <laughs> this, but I don't know. It, it turned out all right to me. Um, we have one more video, but we're going to hold off on that, because here in about five minutes, we're going to call... Grandpa. Grandpa from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I didn't tell the boot this, but I'm going to say it now. If we could uh, pull that clip of Grandpa back up and let me know when that's up. Uh, just in case some of you might need your mind refreshed. But, uh, you know, I've said it twice already. I'll say it again. I'll say it as many times as I want. What an accomplishment to be in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people who can say I was in this movie and this movie, but uh, being in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that is a... Uh, automatic recognition. Automatic recognition. That's the words I was looking for. Uh, do we have that clip of Grandpa? Okay, here is the clip of John Dugan Grandpa from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. One hell of a scene from the Can't original wait. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I do believe on the line now we have, from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, John Dugan, boy, better known to us as Grandpa. Are you there, John? Are you there, John? Yes, I am. Hi. What's Yay, up? Hey, what's up? 
This is a great honor for us for you to be on the radio show, uh, radio internet show with us. <laughs> I don't know why. Because. <laughs> your you, grandpa. Your what grandpa. You, you was in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's beautiful. Yeah, I'm just an old guy who ran in outside, out of, ran in out of the rain. Oh, yeah? I was sitting out, oh, 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 I was sitting outside waiting for your call. And just as the phone rang, it started pouring down rain. So I had to gather up everything I had out there and run inside to answer the phone. Oh, I hear you. How you doing? Oh, I'm great. How are you? Uh, beautiful. And uh, the co-host, Crazy Mary Dobson, how are you doing? You I'm fantastic right now. I will let you know I'm such a fan of this movie that I went to Texas uh, to eat at the restaurant from the old Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. Yeah, you know, I, I have not been uh, there. Oh, okay. <laughs> but Pretty I, good. I, 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 can can you I, guess? <laughs> can you guess what I ate there? Ribs. Ribs. You're right. Oh, what? No, 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 no. I actually should have said finger sandwiches. True, true. Oh, but rib, ribs was correct. That's exactly what I ate. Well, hey. uh... Do they, have, do, do they have finger sandwiches on the menu? You know, I, I really, they they didn't, the only acknowledgement to the, they had a plaque, a, a big plaque outside saying that this was the original house of uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Other than that, they had no reference to the movie whatsoever. Oh. Well, yeah. Good right, exactly. <laughs> well, hey, uh. Crazy Mary Dobson has some questions for you. Are you ready to answer some questions for us? Okay. You're really fuzzy, man. Okay. Let me Can try you hear me? Yeah, let me try one more time. Uh Crazy Mary Dobson has some questions for you. Are you are you cool to answer some of those? Crazy Mary Dobson. Dobson, yeah. Anyway, here's some questions for you. I um for the record, if I say your name wrong, I apologize. But um, this is from James Burke. He says, what's your initial reaction when you first read the script for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie? When I first read the script? Yes. What was my initial reaction? Yes. Okay. Let me Uh... Actually, I, I didn't read the entire script. I, you know, I, I got a... Oftentimes, you don't get an entire script either side. So I originally got a, a kind of a side of what my scene was, and I didn't right. read the entire script until until after I arrived in Texas. So when I, I read the entire script, I, I thought it was uh, pretty good. I, you know, I was only 20 years old and I was a theater actor. And I didn't even, I, I, I had a hard time under, understanding the uh, format of a screenplay. So it would be hard for me to really answer that question. I, I thought it had some uh, good dialogue, for one thing, uh, among the uh, the speaking actors, although I did not speak. So All right, cool. I know that was a really shitty answer to that question. <laughs> no. no, you're fine. It's great. Um, but I, another one he asked was, did you think it would become the cult classic it has became? Oh, absolutely not, no. If if we had thought that, we'd all have the Asians and the lawyers and stuff like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, um, this is the uh, next question from C.J. Lahr. He said, how do you feel about the movies that followed after the first one? Can you repeat that? I'm having a real hard time hearing it. Uh, how did you feel about the movies that followed the first one? Part two and three. Oh, what, what did you oh, think okay, about that? Right, right. Okay. The, um, I saw the the only sequel I've seen completely is the second one. Um, and uh, I really dug it. Uh the other ones, I, I lost interest after that. I, I was pissed off for years. <laughs> because, uh, are you still there? Yeah, yeah. we're here. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Okay. I, I was pissed off, really pissed off for years, because uh, I was never asked to play Grandpa in the subsequent films. 
Hmm. Uh, even though I was, I was highly available <laughs> and all that stuff. But uh, Grandpa, I, I, I guess, uh, you know, the way that they felt, they could use anybody because there was so much makeup, that sort of thing. I liked the second one a lot. Um, the third one I've never seen. The fourth or fifth one I was actually in uh, uh, as a, a cop. The one with Renee Zellweger and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I have a I actually have a scene with Renee Zellweger. But you never and watched it. You was in the movie, but you didn't watch it. No, I never saw the whole thing. <laughs> I thought her. No, no, I. I, I, they sent me a, a, a really rough cut because I had to do some uh, some uh, voiceover stuff for it. So they sent me a rough cut, and I had to go to a, a, a sound studio and, and do some voiceover work. And uh, I have never seen any of the other ones. And then I just did Chainsaw 3D this year, this last year. Or so uh, yeah, we got some questions on that. People have asked. Do you want to go ahead and ask those ones? What, what's the next okay. one? All right, uh, this one's from Vic Philpot. He said, uh, "What's your favorite thing about filming the original movie?" Well, I'm, I, yeah, I really can't hear you, honey. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. What was what was your favorite thing about filming the first movie? My favorite thing was actually. Just doing my first movie, probably. Hell yeah! But uh, um, learning how I was a theater actor, I did numerous plays, and uh, I was quite young. And uh, you know, the, uh, to get the big game to actually do a movie and everything, the favorite part was actually doing a film, and then also was to meet uh, just meeting all the wonderful people I met there, all the wonderful talented people I met while I was there for the summer. Um, oh man, it was so many years ago. But uh, was just the most exciting part was being involved in a film as a young uh, theater actor. And you know, regardless of what they say, theater actors always want to get break at the film. Yeah. You know, even though they say, "I just want to do Broadway my whole life." You know, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go. I want to be a song and dance man. Or you know whatever, right? You know you want to you want to do a film. You want to go to Hollywood and, and break into movies and all that stuff. Right. So that was a, incredibly exciting, and I was only twenty years old. Um, and uh, learning the entire filmmaking process and uh, meeting the other actors and, and uh, a couple actors, um, Jim Cedow for one. And uh, Paul Pertain, and they uh, they both passed on now, but uh, were had both uh, had film experience and uh, were marvelous actors. Um, you know, we weren't just a bunch of schlumps, right? Uh, we were all actors. Exactly. You know, I was an kid. Yeah, you know, I went to. I beg your pardon. I said you can tell watching the movie. I don't know if you're too close to your mic or what, but I can't understand. A freaking she, word. She said you could. I, she could. T you, she could tell that you guys was a, a bunch of actors, not just a bunch of slumps. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. All right, you ready for the next question? Okay. Uh, is Texas Chainsaw Massacre three finished? And if so, is there a potential release date? Oh, it, it's been finished. Uh, we uh, finished principal photography um, November of uh, last year. So, uh, but no, no, uh, uh, no, had, men no uh, mention of a we, release we, date. We, no, we, yeah, yeah. The release date is will be the middle of January 2013. Now they pushed oh, okay. it back. We we finished principal photography uh, November. 2010 what is it now yeah 2010 <laughs> and the original release date was October of 2012 but they pushed it back to January of 2013 what was your favorite part of filming the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 I'm, I'm sorry the, the, the 
three D one that you're in. My favorite part of three D. Yeah, you, you, of of the new movie that you just. Well, uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I, no, I have that answer for you right now. Okay. I was having an air conditioned trailer. <laughs> I had a, I uh, had an air conditioned trailer with my name on it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I remember the. I remember the other documentary. You talked a lot about how hot the house was and how the meat was uh, disintegrating in uh, front of you. And there was no, there was no relief from it. I mean, we have an old, a really old, beat up uh, kind of Winnebago kind of thing of a jigger that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you know, it didn't hold everybody. You kind of go in there for a second, you know. Um, but. It, you know, it didn't, it didn't have kind of like a, a window unit hanging off the side of it that made a lot of noise. So they couldn't, you know, if you're running the sound, you know, they couldn't run it because it fucked the sound thing up. Or it, it, oh, okay. We just suffered terribly. With it. And uh, and uh, 3D, you know, they had money. There you I had go. my own air-conditioned dressing room. There you go. And everything. Uh, TJ. And it was the hottest. It was actually the hottest the hottest summer on record. In, uh, we, we shot in... Uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. That <laughs> was the hottest summer in record, on record there. I was like, what? Well, you know, what's up with you fucking people? <laughs> Why can't we? <laughs> you always right. have to shoot in the south in fucking July. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, T, T. Jack Sass Juana Granda, he wants to know have you ever had head cheese? Yes, I've eaten head cheese. You like it? Oh yeah, well, I'm a I'm a peckerwood man. I'm a I'm a country boy. <laughs> I'm from uh, Clay County, Indiana, <laughs> originally. Oh yeah, I eat all that stuff, uh, and I do like it. Justin Melendez wants to know: Is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre the new one that you just filmed? Is it a lot like the first one, or is it a whole new story all in itself? It uh, boy, that's a good question. Melinda? Uh, Justin, Justin Melendez. Oh, Melinda. Melendez. Justin Melendez. Yeah. yeah. Who's who, who Stan Melendez? Um, it is, it, it, it picks up exactly where the first film leaves off. So the semi, and then, the oh, semi I, you know, I am, I, I'm kind of, I am under a huge gag order here. You have to understand. I can't say a lot about it. But uh, okay. It, it, it is kind of a direct sequel to the first one. It really has nothing to do with the, the, any of the other films at all. It's a continuation of the original story. Yeah, I can't it wait to see up, it now. It picks up. Oh, it's fucking cool. It's a great script. I just swore. Is that bad? Um... It, it it literally picks up. Uh, actually, I think there may be some footage in the beginning of the very end of, of the first chainsaw. And it Beautiful segues. It, uh, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's, it's, it's going to be really cool. All right, Travis Guyton. He wants to know why were you not in Texas Chainsaw Massacre two? But I think you kind of answered that. They never asked you, correct? They never asked me. You know, and I, th it, that was quoted, and I think it was. Uh, yeah, Fango or, or no, it was in uh, 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 one of those magazines, a uh, uh, genre magazine, is saying you know, I, you know, they didn't know us, they didn't know us anything. Right. But we all worked under very, very, very hard conditions uh, for next to nothing, and then they came up with the second film, and, and they didn't pay us back. You know, right? Um, it, the they didn't know us anything, but the gentlemanly thing to do would have been to say, here, it's yours. Yeah. And they never even called me. They never attempted to call me. Mm. They never attempted to get in touch with anybody who knew how to get in touch with me. And anything you read about, well, we couldn't find John Dugan is absolute bullshit. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Th this that was right there all the time. Uh, this question, I'm kind of interested in hearing the answer myself. Uh, also from Travis Guyton. In today, if you could hit any bitch in the head with a hammer, who would it be and why? 
you want to hit in the head, you just let us know. Okay, Rush Limbaugh. Rush, Rush Limbaugh. Limbaugh. <laughs> All right. This is a caller from last time. I can't remember his name. Why do you feel like there wasn't a lot of blood in the first original Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Why well, there wasn't a lot of... Of blood? Bread, as in... Yes, blood. Bread blood, blood. B L O O D blood. Oh, oh. <laughs> why wasn't there a lot of blood? Um, because it wasn't necessary. That that would be my was, answer the, as well. The, 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 you know, the thing that is so marvelous about it, and people, I, I've had arguments with people who say, "Man, when you see, uh, you know, when you see the the chainsaw go into Franklin's guts like that," and they go, "Wait a minute, you never see that." It's all done from behind. It's all silhouette. And, no, man, you see, he cuts them right. You know, he's in his wheelchair. He cuts them right in half. No, you <laughs> don't do that. It's your, it's your fucking sick mind that sees that. Right. It's all implied. And your mind takes over. That's what's so brilliant about it. You know, it, it, it really wasn't necessary. There's not a whole lot of, you know, there's not big body, you know, bags of cow guts, you know. Being, it, that's not there. Why would it doesn't argue, need to be there. Why would someone argue with you about the movie you were in? <laughs> okay. I uh, beg your pardon? She, she said, why would someone even want to argue with you about the movie that you was in that that part would happen? Uh, they do. Trust, trust me, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they argue it. All right. Uh, this one comes from Judy McCauley. Why didn't they cast just an old guy instead of a, a young guy with makeup to play grandpa? Oh, because I was the producer's brother-in-law, for one thing. There you go. <laughs> That's how that happens, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next question comes from Lee Tillett. Have you ate at the house from the... Oh, well, you already answered Have you ate at the house... From the movie because now it's a restaurant. If you have, how was the food? But you already answered that. You haven't ate there. But the ribs are no, good. Never... The ribs are good. I have a question for you. If that's real quick, uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Uh, Wolfman. The Wolfman. We just showed a clip of that not too long ago. Uh, yeah, with, with uh, uh, Lon Chaney uh, Jr. Lon Chaney Jr. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. No. Please do. Because, because you, you identify with the wolf man. And he, because he doesn't want to be the wolf man. He, he doesn't want this to happen. But, and when, when, when they're chasing him and they have torches and it's all foggy and everything and he's running from the, the village people, and he just, it, it's heartbreaking. And that, and uh, I don't know if you're, that film there, and, and now I'm an old dude, so I'm, I'm going. You know, th these are films I watched at the local movie theater when I was a kid. Right. That and um, uh, a movie called The Tingler scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not familiar with The Tingler. You're not familiar with The Tingler? No. Help me out. What I mean, What happens in that? And you're a horror movie guy. It's this thing. It looks like a centipede, and it. it yeah, <laughs> and it attaches itself to your spine. It looks like a giant centipede, about the length of a human torso. And it attaches itself to your spine, and you turn into like this, like zombie kind of person. But it moves from person to person and everything. And there is a scene if you're watching it in a movie theater. There's a and it, it, it detaches, and then it moves along. It creeps along, and it'll attach to somebody else. And there's a scene in the movie where it gets loose in the movie theater. So while you're in the movie theater, there's a scene in the theater with a theater in the theater. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're, you're lifting your feet up and looking under, you know, you know, when you're 12 years old in the local movie theater. That scared the hell out of me. I bet. Um, 
those as far as horror movies that the fly the original fly with Vincent Price I all that, that Vincent Price stuff I love the original I, you know I grew up I grew up in the era of Vincent Price being the bad guy in every horror movie that there was so any of those things you know the uh, uh, all those uh, Vincent Price movies the, the Wax Museum movies and all that stuff I think they all frighten me but, but it, it, as far as modern times the scariest horror movie I've ever seen was the, was the first um, um, Clyde Barker uh, uh, Hellraiser. Yeah, we loved Hellraiser. Uh, Love Hellraiser. That, that was the original Hellraiser was by far probably the most frightening movie I have seen in uh, as far as modern times as an adult. Ha- have you met Doug Bradley uh, at any of those horror conventions that you go to? I, I, I never. Uh, I never. Unfortunately, I never met. Wait a minute. Uh, Doug uh, Pinhead? Yeah, yeah, Pinhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met Doug. Doug's a very, very nice British gentleman. That's what I was going nice to guy. say. He's he's one of the nice. I I, uh, I I first met him at a show in Chicago about three, four years ago, and I'd always been dying to meet him. I have I have a lot of respect for him as an actor, and he has a beautiful voice. And and and. Uh, but, you know, I studied voice for three years, you know, and voice is one of my things. I do some voiceover work. And um, I walked into the bar after the show had closed down, and there was Doug Bradley. And there was a, an empty stool next to him at the bar. And I sat down next to him, ordered a beer, and waited until he had kind of, there was a break in the conversation with the person he was sitting next to. And I said, uh, Hi, Doug, I'm John Duke. And he, before I, got it out of my mouth he goes I know who you are <laughs> I was like you do he goes of course <laughs> so I am so honored he goes well I'm honored to meet you as well <laughs> and I was just like blown away just blown away and I had met Clyde Barker many many years ago in Chicago and who was a hell of a nice guy and just he just wanted to hate him he was young he was in his, we were both in our 30s at the time you know this guy's young good looking Multi, multi talented and stinking fucking rich. Right. And just want to fucking slap him. You know? Let's <laughs> <laughs> see. Well, I write the books, I do the artwork, I direct the films, I write the screenplays, I mean, and you just want to, just, you just want to, well, fuck you, you asshole. <laughs> right. So, you know, so we talked about Clive a little bit, you know, it was, yeah, uh, it was an honor. To meet Doug Bradley, I've met a lot of a lot of dudes on the road and everything, and, and women um, who I, had, I, I most I'd say seventy five percent of the actors from the horror film industry are just really down to earth, wonderful people. But uh, Doug Bradley's up there on the top of the list. He's a he's a class act, absolutely class act. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out there, not just kissing your ass, but you coming on the show with me and Mary. To us, you're a class act to us, and it's a yes. Thank you. It's a pretty big honor for us for you to be on this show tonight. No, uh, are you cutting me off? No, no, no. cut me off. No, I'm not cutting you off at all. You got more you want to say? Go right ahead. Nah, no, not really. All right, man. Well, well hey, uh, well, thanks for having me on. No, no, no. Uh, did you ever go to that Paula Deen's buffet that you was going to go to there in uh, Louisville? The what buffet? The Paula Deen buffet at the casino you said you was going to go to? It sucks. Oh, Paul, the Paula Deen <laughs> buffet. No, I haven't, I haven't been out there. Right. I haven't driven down the river for a while. I haven't driven down the river for a while. Maybe I should take a trip down there. That's right. Well, me and, me and Mary will take you out there if you want to go. Okay. All right, John. Well, hey, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank oh, no you. problem. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And there he was, people. John Dugan, Grandpa from the original Chainsaw Massacre. That was awesome. Yeah, he had a lot of good, good, uh, informative things to (laughs) say about the movie that I didn't know about. Um, On that note, let's go back, recap. Uh, We had John Dugan just now. April the 24th. Uh, please 
write madmanpondo at hotmail.com. We're looking for questions for Reggie Bannister, who was uh, the ice cream vendor from Phantasm 1 through 4, and Bai Ling, who was uh, the, the evil sister on uh, The Crow, the, the original The Crow. Uh, and in May, we're going to have Felicia Rose, who is Angela from Sleepaway Camp. And I'm pretty sure that that's going to excite a few of you because you wrote us saying, hey, try and get Angela from Sleepaway Camp. Just so you know, her name is Felicia Rose, though. But uh, anyway, uh, we was in the middle of something, but then we called John Dugan. But uh, let's go back to it. We have another short film. Uh, who was? Oh, I'm sorry. Who was it? who who gave us this one? Terminator. The Terminator. I'm already afraid. <laughs> Don't be. What, what what do you think when you <laughs> think about the Terminator? A big old robot metal guy? Or? Yeah, with a really deep voice. With a really deep voice. Yeah. All right, but uh, so we're gonna go back to uh, the short films that you, the Juggalos, have asked us. To watch, and now we're going to share it with everybody. Uh, it's called The Killing Joke. And I watched this, and I wasn't too impressed with the ending, but the rest of it was pretty cool. So uh, here is The Killing Joke.
I didn't like that too uh, much. <laughs> well, just <laughs> like Mary lie. said, was the same thing I thought, and the same thing I bet a lot of you thought at home. We had the big gun on her head. If he'd have pulled the trigger and a big flag came out yeah, and said, bang. pow, bang, anything, that would have been ten times better than nothing. Yeah, for real. I mean, why? But we was requested, so there you go. The Terminator, correct? Yeah. There you go, Terminator. I'm tired of movies having potential and they don't use it. Exactly. Hey, uh, speaking of movies, uh, me and Mary, we did a movie called The Zombie Movie. And yes, we uh, did. Let me go ahead and tell you that uh, Ronnie Jonan and Jason Crow and Jason Saint, uh, Jason Saint put a thing out on Facebook. That said, hey, is there any way uh, anybody out there would want to be in a zombie movie? And me and Mary was like, hell Where are yeah. You people? <laughs> so uh, we got a few pictures, uh, if we could pull those up, of what we looked like in the movie. Uh, Mary lost an eye. I had glass in my forehead. Not that it's never been there before. <laughs> but uh, I haven't that- lost an eye before. Yeah, that's a that's fake glass in my head that time. That that was my head. Uh, there's Mary. There's her eye gone. It was a prom. Um, prom queen. Yeah, yeah, I was golfer zombie. <laughs> she was a prom zombie. Uh, she lost her eye in the movie. Guy in the middle. His name's Jamie. Always in character. That man. Always in character. He woke up being a zombie. Okay. <laughs> Uh, there is a whole group of zombies. I'm behind Pondo. Yeah, you can actually see a little bit of Mary behind me. She was in a different outfit then. That's her brother there in the Chewbacca t-shirt. Smiling zombie. And there's my big scene. Uh, we couldn't get them to hit us with anything. We, they had a a uh, foam pipe and I showed him so I hit Mary in the head a few times I said you can hit her with that <laughs> and they chose a foam bat which was a little harder than the foam pipe actually yeah I found that out the, I was in hit with the harder so I, I come up with the bright idea I said how about grabbing one of these light tubes and hit me with it and that's Jason Crow there uh, hit me with the light tube and all of them looked at it like wow that's amazing we've never seen that well I haven't seen your wrestling before. We've seen that a few times. Anyway, uh, if you go to Facebook and search The Zombie Movie or Jason Sane, I think he has a, a link for it on his page. That's the zombie film that me and uh, Crazy Mary was in. If you have any films around the Kentucky area that you want me and Pondo to be in, we be more than happy to come down and help you out with that. Yeah, just uh, write us on madmanpondo at hotmail.com. Say, we'd love to have you in our movie. And uh, as long as it doesn't have anything to do with Mary and a big donkey, we're in. We're there. <laughs> or P- Pondo and a big donkey's fine. Or me and a big donkey. <laughs> sure, why not? All right. Um, the next subject we're going to go to is all the time you juggalos come to me and say, Pondo, where do you get those horror movie t shirts? Don't do look hard. That's right. Well, uh, this one right here, my basket case t-shirt, Mary's Phantasm t-shirt. We're getting ready to tell you where you can find these. Uh, The first one is my basket case t-shirt. If you go to fright-rags.com, they will have, there it is, frightrags.com. This is where I got this t-shirt. They have many, many... Uh, they, they don't go to the norm, though. They don't just put out like a horror movie poster. They actually make their own t-shirt out of it. But I, that's FrightRags.com. From there, I got a limited edition Jason hoodie. It, uh, is Jason is G.I. Joe. It says G.I. Jason, All-American Serial Killer. It's actually a really cool one. Love my jacket. Uh, if Now that you're focusing on Mary, stay on Mary. Her Phantasm t-shirt came from HorrorMerch.com. And on the back it says, shoot to kill or don't shoot at all. Exactly. Uh, there you go. There's uh, Boris Karloff, Frankenstein. Yeah, right there. you can see a couple of the t-shirts on there. But if you go to the website, they have many, many t-shirts, many, many sizes. Uh, the next t-shirt 
Uh, we, we don't have one on, but a lot of people know about this one, RottenCotton.com. And there's RottenCotton.com. You can find your own Serbian film merch on this website. You can disturb all your friends and wear a Serbian film t-shirt. I don't know why you would, but if you'd <laughs> want to, this is where you find them. Uh and before we go on to the next one, uh, let's go ahead and throw that challenge out there again because we are trying to fuck up people's minds all across America and Serbian film yes. is the way that we do it. So we are going to issue the challenge for the third time in a row. Anybody out there who uh, doesn't mind having their mind fucked because this is really going to fuck your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Check out Serbian Film. Do you know how it's spelled? Serbi- A-S-E-R-B-I-A-N Film. Yeah. I, I'm not the speller. She is. Anyway. Not that great either. Uh, don't read it. It's it's like Fight Club. Can't talk about Fight Club. Can't talk about Serbian Film. Don't read a diagram. Don't go to the internet and find out what it's about. Don't find the DVD and turn it over and read the back. Don't do anything but just sit down and watch the movie from beginning to end. You don't have to watch all the credits, but uh, beginning and, to end. Yeah, don't stop in the middle of the movie. You're going to want to. Most of you will want to. If you don't, you're kind of fucked up. But you're going to want to stop. But just bite the bullet and pull through and watch all of it. And what we want is uh, April 24th when we come back. We want callers or we want madmanpondo at hotmail.com request, you know, people write my email or we want call, you know, people, we're going to have people call in. We want to hear how many minds that we fucked up with this movie, Serbian film. Try to fuck up as many as we can. That's we're right. here. So, which brings us to uh, our next subject. And that's horror conventions. Me and Mary love yes. going to horror conventions. And there's actually one coming up very next weekend. Or this weekend. Yeah. Uh, it's March 20, 23 to 25. It's Horror Hound Weekend in Columbus, Ohio. And some of the names they have is Pam Greer. Uh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, which we met already. She was pretty nice, pretty nice lady. Yes. Uh, Stuart Gordon, who directed The Reanimator. Barbara Crampton, who is in The Reanimator, the blonde-headed chick who got the severed head shoved in between her legs. That's pretty awesome of her. Uh, Tyler Maine, who is, who's Rob Zombie's uh, Michael Myers in his Halloween. Gunnar Hansen, who nah. is the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre Leatherface. Get him on our show. Uh, Doug Bradley, who is Pinhead from Hellraiser. Marilyn Burns, who is Sally, that uh, Leatherface chased all the way to the gas station with a chainsaw. Uh, Ashley Lawrence, who is the girl from Hellraiser. Um, and this one, Norman Reedus. Uh, he's famous for The Walking Dead now, but he is one half of the brothers of the Boondock Saints, and I love the Boondock Saints. And uh, Daniel Harris, uh, she's a little girl from Halloween 4 or 5. Hatchet. Uh, and she's in Hatchet. Hatchet 2, right? Hatchet 2, yes, I'm sorry. Adrian Barbeau, who's in uh, Creep Show and Swamp Thing. Uh, there you go. Is that Candyman right there? That's that's not this one. That is a different one. <laughs> Any, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's Horror Hound Weekend in Columbus, Ohio. Let me see if it says the building here. Nope, but you can go to horrorhoundweekend.com, and that gives you all the information. So uh, It's at the Crown Plaza, Columbus North. March 23rd, 25th. That's uh, this weekend. So we got that one. Uh, the next uh, convention that we're going to talk about is uh, Fright Night Week, Fright, Fright Night Film Festival in Louisville, Kentucky. It's in July. We it, will be there for sure. We don't live too far from Louisville. Yeah. And uh, it's going to have from uh, Face Off. 
It's going to have, uh, I can't even remember that director's name, but the one with all the weird hair, the smart ass that thinks he uh, knows it all. Like if you look at the table, he's like the first one. Oh, he uh, he's Lady Gaga's uh, personal yeah. stylist. Too. So that tells you how manly that guy is. <laughs> and then uh, Bruce Campbell, who is, who yeah, is Ash who from Evil Dead 1 and 2, and the Army of Darkness is the lead in that one. Then um, it has failed me. Oh, and the next one. I'm sorry. Scarefest. Oh, my. Scarefest, yes. Scarefest. That's uh, me and Mary are guests at that one. There you go. That's the Scarefest one. Candyman. Uh, Doug Bradley. Candyman's going to be there. Uh, Doug Bradley, who was Pinhead, is going to be there. Kane Hodder. Let me go ahead and tell you something about Kane Hodder. He is a total juggalo. When you see Kane Hodder at the conventions, he's all decked out in, in uh, hatchet gear. And, and uh, you know, I, de- I even believe I've heard him say whoop whoop, haven't I? It's a very low choking whoop whoop. but uh, Yeah, he's choking me before. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. Taking a picture with Kane Hodder is a whole different experience. Like, he yeah. really, he doesn't really want you to smile. You. So, but, uh, so. Here, in a, here about uh, midnight, in about 10 minutes, we are going to have callers. So if you have a horror convention in your area that you want us to know about, please jump on the phone and, and uh, let us know all about it, and we'll plug it here on the show. Now, like uh, 248-306-5616, that's the number. Like we said, we pay attention to the Juggalos, and we do not understand this next thing. But uh, you, the Juggalos, have asked us, what about the Hack Slinging Slasher? Yes. And just so you know, we went ahead and we respected your wishes. And if you really want to know what the hack sling and slasher's been up to, we're gonna bring him in. We yeah, brought he's him in the house. We brought him back to the show. So if he's out there, he can come on in and uh, let us know what he's been up to here lately. And there he is, the hack sling and slasher. You're not on camera yet. You're not on camera yet, sir. There he is. <laughs> he's got a mask on. He he doesn't know. So sit on my shit. Get your butt so, hack sling and slasher. The juggalos have asked, so I'm going to ask you, what have you been up to lately? Oh, well, haven't been up to much, you know. Still doing the whole singing telegram thing. Pretty good business. Um, Not too long ago, I stopped by a certain hotel, and thanks to a little bit of overdose action, a certain starlet is no longer with us. Weren't you in Houston doing this? Eh... Uh, Something like that, I don't know. This is my second one. First one, kind of a joke, if you will. <laughs> so that one's not the one on camera. I hear you. Well, uh, from what I, you know, a lot of people was writing, wanting to know if you killed uh, girls all this time, if Crazy Mary Dobson uh, scared you as much as she did the last show when she was jumping at you and you was jumping back, if this was a horror movie and Crazy Mary Dobson and you was in it, would she be the one to take you out and tell you was in the sequel later? Whoa, 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 whoa. First off, this bitch yes. is going out in the first five minutes. First five minutes. She's the dumb little, Ooh, I'm drunk, woo! <laughs> <laughs> flopping and bam, right in the nipple. I do that all the time. <laughs> yes, you do. I'm watching you. Weird. Yeah. The, okay, if you've been watching me, why haven't you killed me yet? Takes time. <laughs> Patient, patience is a virtue. You should know this, you stuck-up bitch. So has there, has there been any uh, latest slasher uh, action going from the hack sling and slasher? Well, not too long ago, journeying out, doing my thing, and, well, long story short, I skull-fucked a girl. <laughs> By which I took a skull and fucked her with it. (laughs) Pretty good shit. Well, that's probably not the easiest thing in the world to do, but... You gotta believe. (laughs) You gotta believe. You gotta believe. So, uh, anything you want to let us know that 
You know, I mean, your world tour. Do you have a world tour? I'm sure you don't want to tell everybody the areas well, that you're going to be. I'm in. not, but there um, there will be shirts coming out. I'm launching a brand of merchandise. Hackers are us. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get picked up. Uh, there's um a record contract in the works, and it's just going to be some good shit. There's going to be shirts, and it's going to say, Hack, Sling, and Slasher. And on the back, it's going to have a picture of me doing this or something. It's going to move when you, like, shake with it. Well, I understand. So Googly eyes on it. Googly eyes. With this uh, singing telegram job, can you wail us out a couple of notes that you got going on or no? Well, it's going to be about Trey Fitty. <laughs> Trey Fitty? I heard that somewhere. Well, hey, uh, you know, it's close enough to midnight, and we got some callers. You want to sit in with us, and maybe the callers will have some kind of questions to ask you? Yeah. We're not talking shit tonight. Uh, what's that? We're not talking shit tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I really want to talk shit about yeah, this movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you reminded like me of that. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me go ahead and start. Uh, me and Mary went to a movie called uh, Silent House. Now, if you've seen the preview on TV or in the theaters, it's kind of a confusing trailer. And the reason it's a kind of confusing trailer is because the movie is just as fucking confusing. If the trailer is two minutes worth of confusing, the movie is an hour and a half worth of confusing. And by the end of the movie, it's such a stupid reason why this girl is being chased in the house and, and uh, you know why she wouldn't know it. I am going to talk shit right here, right now. Do not go see the movie The Silent House. Don't rent it no. on DVD. Don't download it and, and waste a disc on it. The movie The Silent House is a piece of shit, and that's what I talk shit on. It has, like, some like the last 20 minutes of the movie it has some promise, then it just shits on it. Yeah, the promise is not followed up by and anything. Also, it's rated R. There's no fucking reason at all it should be rated R. No reason at all. this movie should be rated no. R. Yeah. I mean, it's got blood. It. It's got blood in it, but nothing, uh, you know, too radar -ish. No, not at all. Uh, Mary, you want to talk shit next? What movie was I talking shit about? Burning Moon. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. German. Okay. Um, Pondo and his friend and I were looking for this movie called Burning Moon, and Pondo finally found it on eBay. Tell, us, tell him why we was asking for it. He, we were told that this movie had so much glory in it, it was so awesome, and we just had to see it. So Pondo finally found it on eBay with 17 wasted dollars. Cause this was one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. It was German, so we didn't really know what was going on. And I don't know what they do in Germany different from us, I don't know if Germans even like the movie, but it was just awful. The gore didn't even make up for how awful it was. But it did have 10 minutes of gore like we was told. It just was not up to par. I mean, when you tell me, hey, this movie has a lot of gore in it, I'm expecting some good shit. I'm not expecting like... Some shit you pick up at a Walmart. Fake, a fake eye that, that was glued on and you can tell, you know I mean? Don't watch The Burning Man. If you, you probably even never heard of it, but don't watch it. Uh, Hacksling and Slasher, would you like to talk shit about Actually, it? Actually, yes, I would. I've got a great gem from about, I think it was the early 2000s. Little film starring Lou Diamond Phillips. I remember him from the made-for-TV horror film Bats, which actually wasn't half bad. Well, I remember him from Young Guns. Well, you're old. Well, anyway, <laughs> Bats is our generation. Well, anyway, this little gem is known as Route 666, a zombie film, if you will. So it begins, Lou Diamond Phillips plays this cop out in the desert on historic Route 66, and these like three or four reckless teenagers go driving down the like bad part of it, and they're being followed by him, and Lou Diamond Phillips' father was a convict who was like helping build this roadway with two other guys, and they died under mysterious circumstances. Then you find out that like the sheriff or whatever, who was like fucking older than Jesus himself, had killed them all the all these years ago and it's about an hour and a half long zombies don't even appear into it until about 45 to 50 minutes into the movie so by this point you're just like what the fuck there's three of them and then they figure out pretty quickly oh if we don't stand near the asphalt or the concrete they can't get us so do they even walk 20 feet away from the road to follow the path to get to salvation fuck 
No. They are about six inches away from the road, and some dumb bitch, like, falls on it or something. They all show up. <laughs> then there's this huge final scene where, like, the sheriff, the old guy showed up, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to kill you now. <laughs> and then the zombies show up, and there's a little fight, and something happens to the other two. I don't even fucking remember. I think I blocked it from my memory, but Lou Diamond Phillips is like, his dad's getting ready to kill someone. He's like, dad, no. And he like just kind of walks out and he, he nods or something and walks away and then just oh, has a fucking heart attack. <laughs> so zombie heart attacks are a thing now. And then somehow the sheriff ended up laying in the street and he's just like, ah, ah, oh, oh, and you realize that he has seen an imaginary steamroller, which is just lumbering towards him. Not, I mean, he can't even just kind of go and roll out of the way. Nope. He gets crushed by an imaginary steamroller in the fucking film. <laughs> Finn. So Finn. that is what you talk shit on. I'm talking shit on Route 666. So let's recap. I talk shit on Silent House. I talk shit on Burning Moon. And fuck Route 666. <laughs> so don't check out those three movies. So now let me go back. Would you, Mr. Haxling and Slasher, like to sit in on our uh, call-ins to see if anybody has a question for you? I would be most delighted to. All right. Let's start it off. Uh, line one, Justin. Are you there, Justin? Hello. Justin, are you there? Hey, what's up? What's up? Yeah, I am. Uh, that's my you. I'm just sitting here on Man Man Pondo's Horror Movie Massacre with Crazy Mary Dobson and uh, the Haxling and Slasher. Never heard of it. Of course you have. What up? So, uh, what'd you call us in today? Oh, I'm just, like, chilling. Fucking, uh, I was, uh, gonna put up my, uh, fucking movie that I like, uh, fucking Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Ah, Pondo yeah, loves that is. movie. I, I didn't like that one, but go ahead. What's the rest? Oh, man, it's so uh, fucking these clowns, man. They go to this, like, fuck it. No, I know what like, that piece of shit movie is, but what's the <laughs> what's the rest of the movies that you wanted to list off that you liked? Oh, I like that fucking Beast, man. Those movies are fucking shit. Like, fucking, they still fuck this, like, fucking... Take or whatnot, man. It's fucking fucked up. Fucking. Fucking a. Piss. <laughs> <laughs> so, so help me out. What was the name of the the last one you just said? Uh, feast. Feast. Oh, feast one, two, and three. Oh hell yeah, man. Yeah, I liked feast one. Two was okay, and then three just kind of fell off the grid of good. I'm now scared. Ain't hurt nobody. I can feast and hate and kill the clowns, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. So, what was Fuck your yeah. what's your favorite horror movie? My favorite one of all time, man. Yeah. Would have definitely have to be The Birds. The Birds? I can respect that. Yeah, yeah. man. Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, right? Not that other one they made later. Yeah, the really old school black and white one. Cool deal. All right, man. Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about us with horror movies today? Uh, I just want to say much clown love, fucking whoop whoop. Walking away. Hell yeah. Uh, April the 24th, we have uh, Reggie Bannister from Phantasm. One through four. And Bay Ling is going to be calling in to the show. Bay Ling's from The Crow. Uh, leave us questions on madmanpondo at hotmail.com. You cool with that? Yeah, well, definitely. All right, man. Thanks a lot for calling in. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, line two, Casey. Yeah. Are you there, Casey? I'm Casey. What's up, man? How you doing tonight? Shit, not much. So, what'd you call in to the forest? What'd you call in today about? Shit, not much. Shit, just trying to shout out to the fucking ninjas in fucking Texas, chilling with the juggalos. 
Well, let me start you out. What's your favorite horror movie? My favorite horror movie is uh, The Devil's Rejects by Rob Zombie. I've met almost all of the people uh, from The Devil's Rejects, except for uh, Rob and Sherry Moon Zombie. Other than that, I've, I've met pretty much everybody from The Devil's Reject. Hey, yeah, dude, it's pretty sick, man. Otis, that motherfucker, man. He's pretty psycho. <laughs> so, did, let me ask you this, because this is a question a lot of people ask. Uh, do you wonder where Dr. Satan went for the Devil's Reject? Do you, wonder where you know what? Shit, I really don't even know. Like, I, I figured he must have died after the first movie or something. Maybe when all that crap crashed down and was going crazy with that girl. Right. So you like the second one better than you did the first one? Well, I mean, like, I, I love them both, but the second one is, it, I mean, it has some pretty sick shit in it. It sure did. Uh, it's, got, it's got a bit more action, you know. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, thanks for calling in for us today. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, hell yeah, shoot uh, Should I feel like to give a shout-out to all the ninjas in the chat? You know what I'm saying? Go right Got ahead. Keeping it real. With, uh, you know what I'm saying, like Bunny, 13th Juggalo, and on in there. I was keeping it real with the family and shit. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in today. Tonight. Hell yeah, nigga. All right, man. Talk to you next time. Line three is Caleb. Are you there, Caleb? Hi, Caleb. Hey, Caleb, you there? Hey, what's up, Ninja? What's Hi. up? Hey, I want to say what's up to Man Man Pondo, Thank Mary, Pac-Man, the Slasher yeah. over there. <laughs> so nice you. So, uh, so what'd you call us in today? Hey, I'm calling to talk about that movie you requested for, uh, you know, to see if we could watch. Serbian film is how that that's uh, said. Yes. I'm, I'm not sure how you spell it. How you spell it? S e r b i n. Yeah. Oh, I cannot believe I took that. I watched it. Oh, you, my yeah, yeah. you watched it. Then what'd you think? Now don't talk uh, about it. I, uh, I'm not gonna talk about. It. I know the rule. Right. But holy shit. <laughs> Hell yeah! You have to, that's awesome. You actually watched it. Yeah. That. Uh, I mean, I had to close my eyes. <laughs> And, you know, parts of it I just didn't want to watch, but, oh, my God. Do you want a Serbian film shirt now? What? Do you want a Serbian film shirt now? I'm done with all that. I don't want to watch nothing like that. I'm not taking any more uh, watch this movie from y'all. So that, that movie fucked your mind pretty bad. No, I don't want no shirt. No, <laughs> I, I, I want some of that... Uh, Hat slinging slasher shirt, so. Oh, really? <laughs> Mark it. Money. I thought one of those hats to hug us. <laughs> now I gotta make shirts. <laughs> All right, well, hey, uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Um, one of my favorite horror movies to this point would be that new Halloween. Oh. I love the way that went. The Rob Zombie one? No, he's talking about, you're talking about yeah. part one, please, right? Yeah. Or part two. That's pretty good. I like that one. Which one? Besides all the old school black and white zombie movies. Which which Halloween do you like? Part one or part two of the Rob Zombie ones? The part one was my favorite. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, We're about to rip you a new one, dude. Yeah, part two was was not shits. not what we thought it was going to be. Except for Weird Al's cameo. Weird Al was in part two. I will give you that. All right. We're going to respect that. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in today. Hell yeah, ninjas! Woo woo! Hey, hey uh, before you go, uh, uh, Reggie Bannister from Phantasm and Bailing from The Crow is going to be calling in April twenty fourth. So leave your questions at madmanpondo at hotmail dot com. Cool. All right, I'll check that shit out. All right, thank you, Kayla, man. Thanks. Hell yeah. Uh, line four is John. John, are you there? Line four. John, are you there? Hey, what's up, Wolfie? What's up, man? Hey, uh, I just want to... Uh, my question is, uh, I want to know if next time on your show, 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the, the underground fight club lives on through me. I, I haven't said shit about that Serbian film. Oh, yeah? Hell yeah. But, but, I, but I've been letting people know about it. I even go out of my way to walk to my homies' houses and put in their DVD players. Hell yeah, they man. See. Need more people like you what, spread and, our movie. And what around. do your friends say when you put this disc in and they watch it? Do they look at you like you're fucking crazy or what? Man, basically they they ask me where the fuck did you find this film? <laughs> <laughs> I've been asking myself that. Tell you the truth. This, this movie is probably the first movie in my whole life that made me get a pen and paper and jot down the fucked up things I I saw and heard in that movie. You wrote them down? Yes, I actually I actually wrote it wrote them down. Some some of the stuff you hear and 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 you know with other stuff you see. That if makes you, you a, that the, makes you a pretty sick motherfucker as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean for and, and real talk, if if by the end of that film, if you don't if that list isn't at least 20, you weren't paying attention. Exactly. Yeah, there's some there's some really messed up things in that movie right there. Yeah, I'm I'm glad I'm glad you let me know about it, and I'm just no I'm problem. To God. Did Did you hear John Dugan on the radio show a minute ago? Yes, I did. That was awesome. Did he uh, Did he tell you anything that that you didn't know before that you wanted to know now? Hell yeah! So uh, a a whole lot of stuff. I'm at the like like go go back and listen to it again yeah i'm really interested uh he, he wasn't supposed to tell us this and i'm glad he did but i'm really interested that the new one picks up right where the first one leads off yeah it's fucking Damn straight that would that would be uh that would be uh the hitchhiker getting hit with the semi uh Hell sally yeah. jumping in the back of the truck with with uh some redneck driving off and leather face uh, throwing his chainsaw all around the air. I can't wait to see yeah. what happens right after that. Hell yeah, and in 3D. And in 3D. I hope they chase her or something. Or he dr or that dude drives her back to the house or something. Mary's not a big big fan yeah. of 3D. It gives me headaches. I just rather watch the... Like, oh. I watch My Bloody Valentine in 3D. Shut the fuck I'll up. I'll agree with you on this one. Oh. I'll give you this one. I watch My Bloody Valentine in 3D, and I would I I, enjoy, I liked it. I would enjoy it more if I just couldn't watch the movie. I think it. I don't know. Hell yeah. Did you have feeling you like 3D or you don't like 3D? Um. <clears throat> He's all tired. Of I me. uh. I want I want my females in 3D. That's right. Hell there was yeah. a lot of uh, 3D boobs in Piranha. My Bloody Valentine. And in Piranha. <laughs> I'm down for that. Piranha 3D had a lot of 3D boobs and a couple of. 3D badges and all types Piranha of shit. Piranha was the shit. Piranha was the shit. I love that movie. Why do we care if it Jerry has... Jerry O'Connell's 3D penis. I We're care if it has penis, I guess. Throwing it out there. <laughs> Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> uh, all right, Tim. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for calling us today. Yeah, and another one of my favorite horror movies okay. that I haven't seen in a while is Rawhead Rex. I, you know, Rawhead Rex kind of lost me after a while. That's Clyde Barker's uh, first attempt at a horror movie, and uh, yeah, yeah. Al although the story should have captured me, it didn't. Like, I don't know where did this thing come from? Why is it destroying people? I, I wasn't a big fan of Rawhead Rex, but I'm not hating on you for for being a fan because it's a Clyde Barker film, but. That was like his first attempt at a horror movie. Hell, I didn't even know it was a Clive Barker film. I haven't seen it in a while. It's just, I, I, I need to find it. Because I, I like that monster. Did you like I that like monster? Uh, yeah. Did you realize the guy who played that is about my size, but they put a whole bunch of prosthetics on him and made him a lot huger than what he was? No shit. Sure thing. Awesome. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in today. <laughs> Hell yeah. M much love to all y'all. Keep it sick, y'all. All right, man. Later. All right, thanks. Uh, line three, Rage and in Indiana. Uh-oh, who's oh, this? Snap. Rage and in Indiana, are you there? Yeah, what up, Hondo? 
What What's up? up? What'd you call us today for? You know what it Well, my favorite horror movies. Let me hear it. What's your favorite horror movie? Well, besides 2001 Maniacs, uh, <laughs> the original, like, <laughs> Halloween, Friday the 13th, you know, the old school stuff, you know. What I feel like the Halloween, the new one. What was your favorite part of 2001 Maniacs? You being in there. You are kissing ass. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, really, 2001 Maniacs is a, is a pretty well-put-together movie, I think. Yeah, I definitely liked that. I was like, when I first seen it, I was like, holy shit, there's Fondo and there's Robert England. It's like, hell yeah. Yeah, really? that was a lot of fun to do. So, uh, are you going to take our Serbian film challenge? Uh, <laughs> probably have to, because I don't want to get hit with the pops on. So, something tells me something tells me that you're a pretty good downloader. I, I I'm not sure about that, but yeah, I would too. almost I'm getting feelings. I would almost guarantee that you're a pretty good downloader. Probably, yeah, you know. So if you search Serbian film, call us April twenty fourth and let us know what you thought. Or call a certain gay big big dude and uh he'll look you up too. What? Ooh, I'll definitely check it out for you, brother. All right, then. All right, well, uh, All right. I guess we'll talk to you next time, then. Later, Crazy Mary and Flasser. <laughs> Boosh. <laughs> All right, line four, Ninjette. Uh, Ninja Let. Is Ninja Let there? Uh, 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 yeah. What's up, What's up? Ninja Let? What up? Whoa, whoa. You're calling us from Pennsylvania? Yes, I am. So what do you want to talk to us about today? Um, I don't know. I've never done this before. <laughs> I feel awkward. Sorry. All right, all right, all right. Take your time. The Just so you know, just to give you a clue, it's about horror movies. You lost me. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing here, then? What's your favorite um, horror movie? I'll help you out. What's your favorite horror movie? Well, it'd either be Hatchet or Freddy vs. Jason. I loved both of those. Me too. I love both of those a lot. You know, it took five years for Freddy vs. Jason to be made, and I didn't know how I was going to feel about it. I thought the story might have come out uh, pretty pretty silly, but come to find out after I watched the movie, I, it was a pretty good movie. Do you know who played Jason in Freddy vs. Jason? I don't, I, the name escapes Kurt me. Kurt Kazinger. Or, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. or something like that. Kurt Kazinger. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any other horror movie topics you want to talk to us about today? Uh, um, I'd take that like as a no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to play BYW2. You're trying to play what? Backyard Wrestling 2. Oh, really? Why, why are you playing that game? Because it's good, and I got my character <laughs> looking really hot. Oh, yeah? yeah? I bet there's a character in there that'll whoop your character's ass, though. Hack Slim Yeah. He <laughs> would kick my ass. All right, then. Well, thanks for calling in today. All right, you have a good one. Whoop, whoop. Much right. my love. Bye. Line one. I hope this is the original guy from Florida. Uh, line one, Sid Vicious. <laughs> oh, thank you. Are you there, Sid Vicious? Whoop, whoop, motherfuckers. Yeah. I don't think that's original Sid Vicious. It's not the original <laughs> Sid Vicious. What's up, man? Yo, what's up, motherfuckers? So, what'd you call to talk to us about today? Man, this is my first time on here, man. It's mine, too. Liar. Me, too. <laughs> so, Boy. let me help you out. What's your favorite horror movie? Dead Silence? Is that your favorite horror movie? <laughs> that movie sucks. <laughs> Are you there? I said Hack 2. Hack? Hack 2? Yes. H-A-C-K number 2? Yes. Never seen that. Who's in that? Oh, man. It's an old school movie. 
How old school? Are you taking quaaludes? <laughs> oh, I'm so high. I know. Let's get to speed here. So, who's in hack two? Man, I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. But that's your favorite movie? Favorite horror movie? Yes, I don't pay attention to it. <laughs> I understand. A lot of my favorite horror movies I never pay attention to. Not really. <laughs> that's not you. <laughs> So, uh, what? How long have you been listening to the show? Did Did you hear that uh, the interview with John Dugan, Grandpa from Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Man, I listen to this every night, man. We're not on every night. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, man. Well, I hey, record shows. What's that? I record shows. Oh, you record them? So you watch us every night? Pretty much. A little creepy. I'm scared. Like hey, it. I'm bored. What do you think about that crazy Mary Dobson? Let's not talk about that. Let's talk about this. So, what do you think about crazy Mary Dobson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're mediocre. Shut the fuck up. I'll cut you. What do you think about that hack slinging slasher? Man, his motherfucker's a beast. <laughs> I agree. Sid Vicious, you're a little quiet. He's busy being dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, five. Sid Vicious. Well, thanks for calling. Okay. I think we. I think we lost him. Oh, we lost. Asleep. I think we lost him before he even answered the phone. Right. <laughs> All right. We got you. line two. We got Chris from Illinois. <laughs> Hey. What's up, Chris? Uh, not a lot. That's good. <laughs> Chris, are you related to Sid Vicious from Florida? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, so uh, what's going on tonight? Uh, not shit, but I'd call in. So what is your favorite horror movie? Oh, uh, that depends. Like, if I'm looking for, like, an actual scary movie or, like, one of, like, the B ones that you kind of laugh at. Give us both. Give us the first one. What, uh, the, the B movie. What's your favorite horror movie B style? B style? Probably Mr. Jingles. It's, like, about a clown, and it's just so, like, low quality. Mr. Jingles? I never heard of that. Yeah, check it out. It's kind of really fucked up. Where do you find that at? I found it at a family video here in town. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. But for like a real scary movie, I gotta say Rose Red, like the Stephen King. Love thing. Rose Red. Pondo does not like yeah, Rose Red. Yeah, you, you better talk to Mary about Rose Red, because uh, oh, yeah. I uh, Rose Red. I thought it could have been made in an hour and a half, and they made a four night uh, mini series out of it. Oh, I, I didn't oh, yeah, hear you I what? Yeah, I have it on DVD, but it's like six hours to sit and watch the whole thing. Exactly. I I think it's a really good movie. I mean, it's like that little girl's creepy in it. People kind of die slowly, so it gives you time to like get to know their character. I, mean, I liked it. Well, yeah. Stephen King books are there's a lot of detail in them, so you kind of got to make them really long. Yeah, a lot of. Movies that come from books, you know, a lot of shit gets cut out because they're not long enough, so. Yeah. I wish they had done Cujo and made that a little bit longer because there was a lot of shit in that that they could have added. Yeah. It also, it the movie, a lot of shit got cut out that was in the book. Yeah. And don't even get me they started on Frankenstein. They did the same thing to The Stand. It was a six-hour movie, but there was still a lot that they had to cut out to fit it into that six hours. Yeah, but I like The Stand, though. The Stand kept me uh, interested. Uh, the oh, yeah. four, Brad, What was it, man. Four Nights? Yeah, same thing as Rose Red. It was Rose Red didn't fun. keep me. i tell you what I really liked in the beginning, but then fell at the end was It. Yeah. I, I loved I loved Tim Curry as Pennywise the Clown, but then when he turned into a big spider, it just lost me. I, I wasn't into it at all. Yeah, I got a little crazy near the end. Stephen King but, uh, begins and ends with maximum overdrive. That's all I'm saying. 
You liked Maximum oh, Overdrive. That's Maximum all you Overdrive. should say, though. Just sit there you know and be quiet. I'm keep going. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to go to the call. My Stephen King movie is The Shining. Yeah. Actually, yeah, that really- I, I went to the uh, Overlook Hotel while I was in Denver, Colorado, and took a bunch of pictures. That's dope as fuck, man. Hell yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, thanks for calling in tonight. Thanks. Oh, yeah, no problem. Line three, Harley from Oklahoma. Are you there, Harley? Yeah. What's up, Harley? What's up? What's up? Is that your real name, Harley? Yeah, my real name is Harley. I can hardly keep Harley these earphones on. You're so loud. <laughs> so, uh, what's your favorite horror movie? Um, I like all the Exorcist. I agree with you on it, though. How it felt at the end. Yeah, I really loved Pennywise the, spider, the Clown. I, it didn't make any pit. And I loved him as the clown, but the spider, it lost me, like you said. Right. I, w- I would have watched the whole Pennywise the Clown movie before I watched that spider at the end, but St- it's the way Stephen King wrote it, so I guess that's how they had to make the movie. Yeah, I liked um, the newest uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, did you really? You're about one of the only... I liked it better only... than the original. You liked it better than the original. Right. And here's why, because if you uh, have, listen, if you have the infrared or whether it's the film on the original ones, like I do, yeah. Um, he says that in it, that originally he was supposed to be a child molester and they cut it to child killer because of the times. Oh, that was okay. the original story. That's why I like it. It's because it's the original story that he originally wrote. Okay, let's jump back a minute. Did you say that you liked Exorcist 2 and 3? Yes, I love, I love, I love the Exorcist movies. I love the whole demon possessing and... Did you just fall down a well? <laughs> well, anyway, uh, 2, I, I wasn't a big fan of 2 at all. And 3, uh, again, me and... Uh, some friends took out of school and went to Evansville, Indiana for the opening of that and was very disappointed at the end. Well, I liked the first one way better, and then I liked the one with Emily Rose. With Emily Rose? Exorcism. Exorcism Rose. Rose. Yeah. I, I like the last exorcism. I did, too. I didn't like either of those. The one... I did. Um, I have to ask, on the last exorcism movie, what was y'all take on the end of it? I still don't understand the end of it. Of which one? <laughs> the last, the last exorcism. exorcism movie. The last exorcism? The very last one. Oh, the, the very one. last one with the film. True, yeah. What was our take on the end of the last exorcism? When you uh, walked into the fire and the guy. I, the I loved it. I, I thought that was a really good movie. I thought it was. I mean, I actually thought it was a little funny to begin with how the guy was showing, you know, how he would. Uh, uh, trick people into possession, believing there was a possession. And then I thought that was a fitting ending that, you know, they got caught and, uh, he, you know, he had to go to the fight, you know, like they captured him and killed people, killed the two and threw him in the fire. You, you didn't like the finish of it? I think, I think that the dude died. I mean, man versus a big ball of fi- like wall of fire yeah not too good for the man you didn't like the finish the of the last thing exorcism about, the thing about the last exorcism what the very last one was um at the end the dad was possessed the daughter wasn't possessed anymore because of the baby the son was possessed and during the movie the son said don't leave him alone with her talking about the father and so the whole movie at the end really doesn't make sense. Like, when I knew when they brought in the build up the church, the newer church that came in at the end where they threw the baby in the fire. Uh huh. Like, it kind of, in some parts of the movie, it does give hints away that it's a demon church. Right. 
What, what, but, well, yeah, I, I, got, I got that out of that. That was a demon church. Yeah, yeah I did too. All at right. the end of the movie, it was just kind of confusing, though, because they were all at the end of the bus. But at the same time, they were trying to have an exorcist on her. You know what I'm saying? Right. I think they were trying to, like... So... Like, at the end of it, they were... That fire was, like, feeding the baby. Yeah. yeah. Like, making it stronger to grow and... All right. Well, uh, anything else you want to talk to us about? Um, just a quick whoop whoop to the 580 and the 918 and the 405 ninjas and to the all of the other ninjas. Hell yeah. Alright then, well Hell I guess... Yeah, whoop whoop. I guess we'll, uh... Oh, um... I just have a quick question because I know a lot of people down here have been asking. Do y'all know why Psychopath did not show in uh, the Oklahoma area anymore? Uh, that's a DJ Phelan question, I guess. I'm sorry, say it again? What, the Oklahoma area? Why they're not, why uh, uh, ICP won't come to the Oklahoma area anymore. Oh, I don't know. Not uh, you know, some, ICP. Who, you're not, not ICP? What are you asking? I said not just ICP. Like, nobody other than Boondocks has been to the Oklahoma area since the, uh, since the house, uh, house shit tour October 13th, where we all bum rushed the stage and got on, on Shaggy's birthday. I'm not sure. You know, I don't know. It, they could be. They could not find a you know a venue that'll accept it. You know, it's hard to book motherfuckers when you're crazy. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the insane clown somebody, posse. You know that, right? Well, we were. Yeah, I already know. Right. So you know, when you're like, hey, we want to have the insane clown posse come up in the building and do a show. A lot of motherfuckers will be hating on it. You know, it's it's hard. But I don't know. I don't know the real reason behind it. I would just say that that may be, may be an answer. Or maybe, uh, maybe I don't yeah. know. Maybe uh, it had something to do with you, everybody bombarding the stage. Are you in Louisiana, though? No, um, Oklahoma. I'm from down around, like, I'm in the south part of the, uh, of the state by Texas. Okay. Are you sadistic? Mm, not really. Not as much as I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Well, I but, mean, did did you call in as your name is sadistic? No, no, I've never called in as sadistic. Okay. What did you call I in, in as? Maybe a year ago for the Harley Quinn song. I've never called in as. Okay. I'll respect that. All right. Well, we want to thank you for your call tonight. All right, we'll All right, we'll talk to you next time. Line one is David in Michigan. What's up, David? What's up? Oh, my God, I'm on the air with Man Man Pondo. That's awesome. That doesn't mean a damn thing, trust me. <laughs> oh, no, man, I'm, just, I'm a big fan, man. Uh, I'm, you're a crazy man for what you do in the ring, dude. I, like, I'm a cage fighter. I consider myself a tough guy, but I ain't letting nobody hit me in the face with a light bulb. <laughs> let, me, let me go ahead and like, clarify... You wouldn't let anybody hit you with a light bulb. I wouldn't get in the cage with anybody who's going to punch me in the face and try and break my bones. But you know what? Uh, that's, that's disappointing, man. You would have a lot of fans if you got into it. I'll tell you that. I would love to see Man Man Pondo as the main event somewhere. Oh, That'd yeah. be awesome, man. All right, well, uh, that, that, uh, I got a question for you, too, man. Uh, well, uh, I heard you talking about how you, uh, you've been in a lot of horror movies. Uh, no, one. One horror movie. One, just one? All right. Two. Well, uh, what do you think about, like, uh, the realistic, you know, violent fight scenes that can happen now that you've got guys uh, that can actually map out, like, a choreography fight scene, you know? What do you think, like, movies are going to move into a direction where there's more realistic fight scenes in movies between, like, the hero and the, and the villain? Well, me, Mary... And uh, Haxley and Slasher, we just went to a movie called The Zombie Movie. And we was telling them, hey, uh, you know, you can get a little rub with us. You can hit us with that. You can hit us. With and they just didn't want to do it. They was like, you know, we, we're, we need you for other scenes. And we're like, we'll be there. Fucking hit us. Hit us with we're stuff. Right, right. And, and well, they, just, I mean, they just did not want to do it. They wouldn't do it, do it yeah. 
Well, I mean, there's a lot of other filmmakers out there that'll probably pay a, a professional, you know, martial artist to come in and work with the crew and show them how to perform techniques properly, you know, and just, they might be more comfortable doing it if, if, if they have a professional instructor showing them how to do it. And there's, that's one thing I'm really excited to, looking forward to seeing in, in horror movies is just, you know, realistic violent scenes, you know, like somebody struggling for position, you know, before he can, like, hit a submission on somebody. That'd be really cool to see somebody pull off a fine arm bar in a horror movie, you know? Hey, get me booked. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do get, it. Get some Tony Jaw down here. Right on. Hell yeah. Take some bows. That'd be cool. cool. Hey, uh, so what's your favorite horror movie? My favorite horror movie? Ooh, God, I don't know. I'm a big fan of Stephen King, Wes Craven. I like a lot of Wes Craven 70 movies, like the the original Last House on the Left. Yeah. Loved it. Loved it. You know, I met, uh, shit, his name escapes me, but the, the lead villain in The Last House of the Left, he was not a nice guy at all. Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's David Hess. Actor, I mean, a lot of them are full of themselves, so. David Hess was the man's name. What, I, David Ash? Hess, H-E-S-S. Hess. -S. Ash. I, I've been all to right. a lot of horror conventions, uh, and three people out of all the horror conventions stands out to not well, being shitty people. Uh, Linda Blair was very shitty because I didn't want to give to her Humane Society uh, fund. Shawnee Smith from Saw. I don't know what her problem was. She was just really shitty. And David Hess yeah, was yeah. very, very shitty. David Hess right. was in was in one of the low budget movies and had no reason to have the ego that he did, but he sure did have one. And and uh, you know, like I don't know. Okay, you say you're a big fan of mine. If you come up and ask me for my autograph, I would have no problem with that. David Hess. Be awesome, man. Yeah. David Hess acts like, you know. Yes, he's for an arm and a leg. Yeah, it's too good to give you an autograph, and I, I'm just not about that oh, kind of well, shit. Yeah, that's. I mean, the fans push you where you're at, and to not take time, and you know, just say hi and tag an, tag an autograph is just. Well, why do out. Why do a movie if you don't want fans from it? You know. I, I want to ask I you. Will. I want to ask you a question since we're talking about the last house on the left, because. I think the remake of Last House of the Left was a good remake off the off the original. Did you think that oh, as well? Oh yeah, I, I I fell asleep, but I was drunk as fuck when we tried to watch it, man. So, I, you know, I didn't make it to the my favorite part of the movie, which would have been the parents getting revenge on them for doing that. Oh uh, yeah, daughter. you missed out because so, uh, that that yeah, was a hell of a finisher. That's, I hear he like I don't want to spoil it for anyone right. hasn't seen it, but I hear he takes like a microwave to something. Oh yeah, that's and, like, that's a fair part. Yeah. Sure, right there. I'll have to rewatch it just for that for sure, man. All right, well why don't you rewatch that and uh, me, Mary, and probably the Haxley and Slasher will be back April twenty fourth, and you can tell us what you thought. April twenty fourth, right on that. All uh, right, shout man. out to any juggalo. Hey, can I give a quick shout out to any juggalos yeah. going to the Emerald Theater on four twenty, man? Hell yeah, man! I'll see you. I'll see y'all up there. Much, wow. much clown love. Later, guys. All right, man. Later. Thanks a lot. Line two is Shaggy from what? Shaggy, are Hello? you there? Yeah. What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> you and Sid Vicious all take the same drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite horror movie, man? My name's Mike. What's your favorite horror movie, Mike? Favorite movie has got to be Christine. Your favorite horror movie is Christine? Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, they just had a horror convention in uh, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and they brought one of the original Christines out there. What? Sure did. What? One of them that didn't get crushed. <laughs> they destroyed. Right. They destroyed eight of those cars in that movie. Did they really? Yeah. Holy shit. A lot of money. Eight of those cars got destroyed, and I think three survived. And they had one of the three at that horror convention in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. What? Yeah. So. Uh, I can't uh, tell if you're excited or not. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm really excited. Fucking, that's my favorite car. That's cool. Anything uh, else you want to talk scene, about? I think, I think the best scene from that is uh, when they back, when they take the Christine car and they take the Camaro and they back them up equally. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty epic. So, uh, would that, so, at all the Stephen King films, why is that one your favorite? Because they use cars, of course. Oh, uh, you a big car guy? Oh, hell yeah. Did you I was actually wanting a, uh, there's a couple cars on my list that I want. Did you see the old movie called The Car? The Car? Uh-uh, yeah. not yet. Check that out sometime, you might like that. It's about a car that's really? alive as well. What? Yeah. So what year is it made in, do you know? You what? know, I don't know. If you go to uh, Internet Movie Database, I'm sure they'd be able to tell you the year. I'm not sure what the year on that is. All right. All right, man. Well, thanks for your call today. Yeah, thanks, man. Mike. And a quick boop boop to everybody. All right, man. Thank you. Line three is Nathan. Nathan, are you there? What's up? Yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up, man? You in Texas? Yeah, Texas. I bet it's hot as hell there right now, isn't it? Nah, actually, it's pretty fucking cold. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, dude. Okay, before we even go farther, have you been to the Texas Chainsaw House? That's a restaurant in Texas. Uh, no, no, I haven't. All right, it's pretty good. Get the ribs. So what'd you call? Oh, that finger sandwiches. Uh, finger sandwiches. So what'd you call us about today? <laughs> I was just telling you about my favorite movie, Sex Chainsaw Massacre and Jason. That's the shit. Is that your two favorites? Oh, yeah, all day. That's cool. Which, uh, Jason, do you like the best? Which part? I don't know. I have all, I have all the Jason collections. All the Texas collections. I guess uh, you're, you're a little biased that you're from Texas. That's why that's your favorite horror movie? Yeah. Did you hear John Dugan on the show not too long ago uh, at 11? Uh, no, I just got on actually. Uh, okay, well, when you when you when this gets put online, we had John Dugan, who was Grandpa from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, he did a question and answer him for us at uh, if you go two hours in, it should be about two hours in. 11 o'clock. Well, it won't be 11 o'clock. I don't have to pick that out. All right, man. Well, thanks for your call today. Oh, uh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, thanks. All right, line two, Greg from Indiana. Greg, are you there? I'm here. What's up, man? Please be a little more energetic and exciting than our last three <laughs> callers. I'll see what I can do. All right, man. What's your favorite horror movie? Um, I got to go with the Halloween series, man. All the Halloween. Scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Which one's your favorite out of all those? Uh, probably just the first one. Yeah. What about three? Did that scare you? <laughs> uh, piss me off, rather. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you about pissed <laughs> off. I waited forever for that, and then waited in a long line to get in there. And then when I got in there, there was no Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of pointless to call it Halloween then. Yeah, I, I think and and uh, the three of us have talked before. That would have been a good movie if they didn't make it a Halloween. Yeah, definitely. But uh, since they made it a Halloween, I think that fucked up everything for that movie. Definitely, man. Definitely. So, have you ever checked out the movie Serbian Film? Hmm. Um. Funny you speak of that. I'm actually uh, acquiring that. You could say as. I talked to you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you know the rules of that movie? Um, just shut up and tell the next person. Don't tell them about it. That's it. Oh yeah. That's it. Fucking the people's mind all across <laughs> the United States. <laughs> I'm waiting to waiting to see what it's like. It's bad, man. Really bad. So. <laughs> So uh, April 24th, did you know that we're going to have Reggie Bannister from Phantasm and Bay Ling from The Crow? Uh, uh, yeah, I heard you mention something about that. I'll, uh, I'll tune in for that, definitely. Well, tune in is great, but 
if you want to ask him questions, write them to uh, MattManPondo at Hotmail.com. All righty. Sound good? Definitely. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for your call. All right. All right. All right. Uh, if I can get the booth to go back, um, let's go ahead and go back over our guest that we have coming uh, April the 24th. We're going to have Reggie Bannister, and in case uh, you didn't tune in at the very beginning, we're going to uh, go ahead and play the scene again just to get refresh your mind on who Reggie is. And uh, surely, if you saw Phantasm, you're going to know who Reggie is. He's the ice cream vendor. He helps Michael a lot. Helps him out a lot. And the tall man. And he was, uh, him and the tall man was the only two that made it in all four movies. So uh, if the booth has that clip, All right, here is Reggie from Phantasm 1 through 4. Reggie Bannister from Phantasm 1 and 4 will be a call in on April the 24th. Please leave all your questions that you'd like to ask Reggie on madmanpondo at hotmail.com. Uh, and that's the first half. The second half of Madman Pondo's Horror Movie Massacre will have Bay Ling from The Crow. She was the Asian sister. Uh, if the booth tells me they have that clip ready. We can play that. And here we go. Well, thanks, 
checking out another clip on the web show and awesome fun catching up with actress Bai Ling. If you check her out on uh, YouTube and Google her name, it's pretty amazing what you find. She is a very unique character, super talented in Crank 2 there with Jason Statham. She's been in some amazing films on TV series around the world like Lost, playing the uh, love interest of Matthew Fox there, and just so many unique roles. She's very, very talented and great to catch up with her. Um, I first sort of got to know her in the film The Crow, uh, the last film from Brandon Lee, an absolute cult classic film, and here she is in a cool scene from that. You are very restless. I just wish I was a little hungry again, that's all. Be careful of what you ask for. Yeah, you may get it. There are energies colliding against you. Sienna's is believing in that. Yeah, so there she is. After watching that film, I remember wishing that she was my half-sister. It was crazy and very sexy, but... friend T-Bird won't be joining us this evening on kind of a slight case of death. <laughs> Wanna sit down? Uh, uh, uh. Well, well, well. Devil's Night is upon us again. So we throw a little party, start a bunch of fires, make a little profit. I like the pretty lines. <laughs> Problem is... And there she is. Belling... For, uh, from The Crow will also be a call-in guest April 24th right here on the horror movie Madman Pondo's Horror Movie Massacre. Uh, let's go ahead and recap, and we're not going to show the whole video, and I really hate the song, but uh, uh, May, Felicia Rose, who is Angela from Sleepaway Camp, because we've gotten a lot of requests from the Juggalos wanting... Uh, they, you don't really say Felicia Rose. You say Angela from Sleepaway Camp. Well, me and Mary went out and we found her, and she's going to be a call-in guest in May. So here's a small clip. I'll cut it off. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Booth. So here's Angela from Sleepaway Camp. And Is the sound off? Yes. What said? They okay. turned that Good. gay Good. song Good. off. <laughs> But uh, for those of you who haven't seen Sleepaway Camp and wondering, uh, before May, there she is, Felicia Rose. Angela. Not a talker, beginning of the movie. She's not a talker at all, but she will be a talker on this radio show, April the 24th. She's a lot older, and, and uh, I think she might have been 13 or 14 in this movie, looks like. Anyway, and there baby. is Angela from Sleepaway Camp, which is Felicia Rose. She will also be here uh, in May. We don't have May's show date yet, but leave all your questions for all three of those guests on MadmanPondo at Hotmail.com. Uh, so we have the hack sling and slasher here. But I'm wondering, do you know anything about horror movies, or do you just know about killing chicks and singing telegrams? Well, I am very extensive knowledge and many a great thing, but I do have a horror movie fun fact for you due to my extensive badassery. The film Friday the 13th, Part 8, Kane Hodder played Jason, as we all know. Well, there is the scene in the diner when he's walking through near the end and he's chasing him into the sewer. A taller man than him steps in front of him and is basically like, Hey, buddy, where are you going? And Jason just throws him into the mirror and just crashes it, and he just falls. That man was Kurt Kazinger or whatever, the man who would go on to play Jason in Freddy vs. Jason. Mm, and, I, and from what I understand, Kane Hodder was not happy about not being casted in Freddy vs. Jason, so I wonder if that was any uh, conflict there. I bet, I bet he wishes he really did throw him into that mirror now that he knows what he knows. <laughs> he did refer to him as a bitch. Oh, he did. Kane, there is an interview where Kane referred to Kirk as a bitch. Huh. 
Then he must be a bitch, because Kane Hodder is a pretty honest guy. Yeah, you can't argue with what <laughs> Mr. Hodder says. Uh, I'll choke you if you try to argue with him. So, we got about three minutes left. Uh, if you have any requests that you want me and Mary to watch, any movies out there that you would like us to check out and talk about on the show, go ahead and leave that on madmanpondo at hotmail.com. Uh, help me out, Mary. If there's... Any questions that you have for our guests? Yeah, if you have any questions for Reggie Bannister from Phantasm or uh, Bai Ling. Uh-huh. Bai Ling. Close enough. Uh, from The Crow. And uh, even Angela, I mean. Leave them on the Madman Pondo at Hotmail.com. Uh, tell all your friends about the show. And the telephone number, 248-306-5616. Uh, check out all the horror conventions, uh, all the t-shirt websites that we gave you. If you have any t-shirt websites, let us know. We're always looking for If you have any information, yeah. horror movie related, if you have horror conventions, uh, t-shirt uh, dot coms, you know, anything, just leave them on madmanpondo at hotmail.com and we'll definitely, we, we check it all the time. We read everything. Uh Haxley and Slasher, you got anything you want to say to finish this out? You know what? As a matter of fact, I do not, but I can ramble on and pretend like I do. Well, rambling on is great. What? You got one minute. Go for it. One minute? Well, I'd like to tell you all a story of one of my earlier kills. I was a young lad growing up in my anywhere town USA. I moved around a lot. And there was this girl I had my eye on, and, well, I asked her out, she threw up on me. I thought that was very rude. So I took a weed whacker, covered it in barbed wire, and shoved it down her throat. Pretty good, pretty good. And then she threw up on me again, because I wasn't able to kill her just yet. Still learning, still learning. It's a young man's game at the time. But I was already young, and I was still failing at it. But I learned. And I grew up, and I became a better person, and I learned a little bit about myself that day. And it is that I do not like mustard. <laughs> there you go. She eat mustard, and she thought no, I, um, no, I just tried to eat her with a side of mustard. <laughs> oh. I understand. You can't I got tell, hostile. I'm when... flicking my tongue in and out right now. <laughs> All right, I'm everybody. Comfortable. Hey, uh, for Madman Pondo from Crazy Red Dobson. the Hack Sling and Slasher. This has been Madman Pondo's Mad Madman Pondo's Horror Movie Massacre Episode Three. Four hours today. Yeah, please tune in. April twenty fourth is our next show. It's on a Tuesday, and I guess we will see you next time. Thanks for tuning Bye. in. Bye. Boosh. I say boosh. You know what would be the shit that's tripping What if we had our own island man? That's my toes in the sand watching hoes play volleyball it's summertime and i'm feeling jolly all food on the fire boats in the water and taking time off from my cereal slaughter and here for the weekend me and these friends sunny sunshine blue skies never end there's a mermaid waiting me to come in underwater on my ball she's humming smoking on a fat one we come to have fun i got my dick in your hot dog bun pouring up shots for everybody that's sipping let's get loose now skinny dipping don't hate me Cause the speed of what I'm wearing Got your girlfriend staring We out here, sky so clear Ice cold beer, suntan topless Bitch, come over here yeah. I'm Juggalo Island We can And they all coming over soon Have a new out I'm getting blue out Come over here If you ever get through out We got a place for ya Never will ignore ya Got a hot plate And a drink We're gonna pour ya Corpse on the grill Plays on the one two Hit a run Hit the dead Have fun too Sniffs in the water Bump and we see you Doing flips in the air Run and see you No cops Unless they're pouring up shots, unless they're helping us smoke these crops. Surfing on the big one, have a big fun. Fucking with a big fat one under the sun. Letting them hang, doing our thing. Listen to them up and down the beach, everybody sang. I juggle on my leg. We can Yeah.
bed, boogie woogie in the moonlight. Fuck the rules, right? The dead do bite. Listen to the Ouija board, we can only do right. Can't do wrong, fatty in a blue thong. Everybody can't be together with you gone. Come get with this, we get ridiculous. This world is ours, every bit of this. Get to a burger with cheese, enjoy the breeze. I'm top of coconuts out of palm trees. Here we all win, I'm free ballin'. See me shoreside surfing at a dolphin. Grass skirts, dead hula girls, hatchets. And whatever your fishing hook catches. We don't do it out too, so let's hang, boom, pow, bang. Let's do the damn thing. You know, I juggle on my lid. We can be one. 